Hey, mic check. Mic check, one, two, one, two. How's everybody doing out there on this beautiful Wednesday? That's right, we are back on Wednesdays. Let me hit the air horn. Hey, you other podcasts can drop on your normal days again. <laughs> hey, that's right, y'all. I like it. Hey. Let me hit my air horn. Hold on, let me turn this down some so niggas know my vibe. Did somebody in High Five die? They did, right? He died. At least he Rest in peace to him. I really I fucked with him a lot. Oh, hold up, man. You can't cut it off yet. Hey, come on, Ma. Ma, so my theory, I played this for you. Why? Wait, pause. What the fuck you played for I Because I have a theory. What's your theory? My theory is, well, first of all, the last few weeks, we've been off a little bit, like with the times and shit, right? But also the last few weeks, I've paid, played very aggressive music at the start of the podcast. And I mentioned this theory to Parks a long time ago. Mm. But I feel like the song at the top of the podcast sets the tone for the podcast. And now you have the YouTube people thinking that me and you are going to fight. I read the YouTube comments. <laughs> They've been thinking we were going to fight no, too. Yeah, we're no, fight. Part, so, no, yeah. no, no, but that's important. Go, that's why important. Why do you think everybody's going to fight? Well, the hook is on, so hold up. <laughs> we can't even talk about fighting when, when this chorus is on. <laughs> All right. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. All right, we are here. Welcome to the Joe Button Podcast. No, no Joe Button. Uh, also, I didn't hit our drops last week. No, no, well, we are not. That's my other theory. When I don't hit our drops, it just don't go according to plan. That's one. And two, more. All right, so the YouTube people have had you about to fight Parks a few months ago. Which but I never, th- I never, th- but I never thought they would think that you would have the smoke for me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me turn down think, the gunshot a little bit. It was, it was bit. a Nikki conversation. I would think you before Parks would ball. Because y'all get into it. Not no, like that, but like but y'all... Uh, see, are you joking right now? Or are you serious? No, because people don't know y'all relationship. And when y'all argue, it may look like it's really heated and it's not. Man, Joe's Ma. heated with everybody. That's, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's not with true. Him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... Uh, well, that's what everybody says about me. Yeah. But yeah. this this is more so based on you, though. I, I'd be chill. They don't say Joe's about to fuck everybody up in the podcast. I, I'm, I thought I was the most chill. You're not, man. You're not. You're not, man. I'm trying. I'm here for okay. you. So, so I played a different... <laughs> song i was a so little aggressive I mean, last week yeah <laughs> just, bad, just a little let me, bit let me apologize to the room I was, my bad I was, I, was, I was gonna pull you to the side like hey man <laughs> <laughs> my bad like, was you know? cool <laughs> i'm cool uh, man. but so i'm in a great 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 mood i'm glad that we are back to our normal schedule but i ain't gonna lie i got smoke for niggas this week man Uh-oh. what's up uh we're gonna gradually get into the smoke well, where do we start first? It ain't mu- ain't much happened. Ain't much happened this week. So I got smoke for niggas. Um, a lot happened just within two specific topics. Wouldn't say nothing happened. Well, how how was everyone's week? First of all, my week is uh, cool. We- weather's starting to change a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, y'all are always unsure about your week. <laughs> well, <laughs> y'all I had to been... think about it. You know, sometimes you have oh, a rough sh- week. We ain't even say what episode this is. What what is this? Episode one fifty nine. Yeah, swag me Same. out. Episode 159 <laughs> of the Joe Budden Podcast. No, I'm, I'm Joe up. Budden. Rory's talking for some reason. Parks and Maul is here. Erickson is here. Zayvon is here. Uh, man, niggas' weeks was just cool. Pretty uneventful week, I feel like. Are we talking about the weekend or the week? Whatever, I don't care. I think I got drunk. I went to Atlanta for like 24 hours. That was cool. Oh, yeah, how was that? A so, lot, lot of podcast fans in Atlanta. Yeah. I was happy uh-huh. about that. You out there, amigo? Because we because we dissed the South so much. I, I, I felt the love. I was Did happy. Do we diss the South? No, we're just yeah, New Yorkers, and it we just don't, sounds like it. You know what it is? We don't diss the South, but we don't have accurate Southern representation on the podcast. Mm. So it's not that we diss the South. We just don't share some of the perspectives that they do in the South. Mm. But shout out to all the listeners in the South. It's not that we're New York biased, but we are. I was going to say we're I'm definitely New York. Biased. Pretty much. That's right. not true though, because if you pick four niggas from New York. Who really fuck with Southern hip hop? I would pick us. Yeah, I definitely like out of a crew. Yeah, Yeah. think all the New York crews are friends. I'm picking us. (laughs) I think we know more stuff. We would win that friends that feud battle for for Southern hip hop. For Southern hip hop in New York. Yeah, we would. We're never doing friends that feud again. By the way, (laughs) 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 they won't get me to buy drinks all night. (laughs) I thought you didn't drink. Twenty minutes before, so you're just buying drinks. Each category, (laughs) you had no choice. (laughs) <laughs> Maul, we didn't really touch on this topic last week because I wasn't feeling your swag. But you said uh, when we did the Friends That Feud, 
because y'all insulted me and I didn't react to it. Y'all said I was of no help. Y'all said that when they asked who had the most Sports Illustrated covers, and I said Michael Jordan, you all laughed me out of the room, and that was the correct answer. I was going to say that would have been my guess. Who did you say? Kobe. Maul said think, Tiger Woods. Uh, I think we and he said, said it, he a, said it with Woods such conviction, or, or though, <laughs> that I just kind of thought that that was the right answer. It's sports so well, so, let's, and, let's, no, 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 no. It's not no, that I thought that was the right answer. That's why the it whole makes sense group, that it's Mike, though. We, we looked at Maul for the, to be the sports guy, and the whole group was like, all right, we're rolling with Maul. But right. that, but that, that may, thinking about it now, Mike makes sense because at that time when Mike was Mike, it, Sports Illustrated was just... I needed you to think about it before. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to note, that was like the first question, and then you checked out for the next 25. Not true. <laughs> then the very next question was... Venus Williams has won how many Grand Slams? Didn't we get that right? No, because I then said, well, Maul said, too, Venus Williams was popping uh, prior to Serena for a long time. So we assumed that number to be large. Then I said to Maul, hey, what is a Grand Slam in tennis? Just to make sure, because I was confused. It's like when you win a bunch of different things. Because I confuse it with the cycle and the... No, I don't think there is one tournament called the Grand Slam, I think. No, I think no. it's like... Um, Can you Google that, Savon? Because because the correct answer was Venus Williams at like 18. And she has yeah. not swept the well, shit I, I 18 had, times. I had the Kobe one, right? All-star appearances and y'all well, shut me down. Of course you're going to get the Kobe one, right? Yeah. Eh, we took some thinking with that one, too. <laughs> yeah, it did, but I, I got it right. It but we won. Somehow we came back and won. It's four tournaments, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. you got to win she all won four major tournaments. Seventeen of them motherfuckers. God, God damn, damn, Venus. Well, I would have been wilding right. before, but I did days. think it was nineteen up there somewhere around there for some reason. All right, anyway, a lot to get into, yeah. so let's get into it. Do we want to start with Cole or do we want to start with Kanye? I'm telling y'all now, if y'all don't feel the way I feel about Kanye, then I'm gonna get aggressive. <laughs> 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 Maul has kind of been sick of Kanye for a while. I've been sick of Kanye. Maul, Maul, I'm with you today, Maul. Today we will form a, an alliance. <laughs> okay. We will put our past transgressions behind <laughs> us and bond over this Kanye topic. Transgressions. <laughs> transgressions behind us. I don't know how Rory's about to feel. I said how I felt uh, on uh, Sunday. Well, listen. When everyone else was dancing, I was the only one that said it. I'm tying this Kanye shit to modern day slavery, to Sahai's tweets, Are you going to to compromised media, to new strategic marketing, mm. to like so many different things, man. Listen, if you are listening to this podcast for the first time, pardon me, you are about to hear me in my true state, which is obsessive as a fuck. <laughs> I have had nothing but time to obsess over what the hell is going on here. So I guess let's start with Kanye. Let me make a distinction because I see, I've see i seen a few people attack me during my six in the morning Twitter rants that I delete before everyone wakes up. <laughs> uh, people say, Joe, you have to pick a side of the fence to, to stand on because it, on one point you say you're only here for the music. And then on another hand, you're sick of Kanye. That's, well, that's a valid uh, criticism. Yeah, but you could still be sick of him and still want to listen to the music. Let me respond to these people first because I'll forget all of my points and I do want to hear from you guys. I'm talking about Kanye West, the person, right now. I'm not having a music discussion. I want to talk to my good friends about Kanye West, the person. And as much as it seems like a very repetitive and redundant topic because we've discussed Kanye West, the person, and some of his views before, I see it a bit clearer now, today. Hmm. Now, we are going to talk about his music because I'm a Kanye West fan musically. But I'm separating the two. I am able to do that. I don't want to mix them up. When people talk music, they get into the people. I don't want to do that, so let me make that clear. Now, what do y'all think about these tweets? <laughs> I think he. I think this is because Kanye is is very calculated. He's very meticulous. He's you know. So I. It's I don't just know if ironic he's calculated. That, no, he's calculated. No, I think he emotionally very, just says shit. He blurts out whatever pops in his brain. But even that's with calculation. Yeah, yeah, with even that's like he. It doesn't surprise me that he's doing all of this around promotion time. Albums oh well, of and, course. You know he what I'm only saying? tweets so when he like, has to. It, it, 
what he what he's doing is is you know this is what he does. He he pops out of his hole whenever it's a project coming or he has some shit going on, and you know everybody starts talking about like right now he's the talk of the internet. Like mm-hmm. You can't you know what I'm saying go, go on any social media app and not see Kanye something. Yeah. So I think this is exactly what he wants. My beef is not with Kanye West. Uh oh, and let me make something else clear before we delve further and I and I forget. I have no problem with Kanye West being a Republican. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's important to state. Damn, that's a nasty place we in where we got to preface shit with political views. Right. And that's one of the reasons I like, remember the world when like that was taboo, people's political views? Right. Mm-hmm. You didn't even speak about it. I prefer it that way. <laughs> because this is- It was is, like offensive to ask. Because this is the fucking, the untold caveat that it comes with. Once people start talking about their political views, I'm judging you, man. <laughs> yeah, I think that's natural. That's a natural thing to do. What the fuck is you- Sahai the Prince tweeting about at three in the morning? What do you say? He said, y'all do know Martin Luther King was a Republican, right? Oh, God. Stop. Nobody say anything. <laughs> we love Sahai's album. How could you even make that album and make that fucking statement? But wait, that's not true. Let me take it back. Let me take it back. Let me take it back. I haven't started my weird conspiracy theory podcast yet, but I agree with them. I agree. I don't, I'm not, I say all the time, I'm not one of the fucking uh, black people that just blame white people for everything. That's not who I am, personally. So I think what some people are isolating with Sahai and Kanye and this Candace Brown woman that I didn't know who she was until I Googled, is that you can be Republican and f- not be so uh, alt, alt, alt wing. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. they're saying. Yeah. Which is true. They're preaching the whole uh, black people do not need to look at white people to fix black issues. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Let me say that. And I've never shared any of my views. And I'm not talking about it neither with none of you niggas. But I agree with that. But I don't think that's the problem here either. (laughs) Nor do I think that's just what that woman Candace Owens point of view is. Before we get there, side of fucking Prince with your amazing album and all of your woke shit that you speak, y'all be leaving a whole lot of context out. And I'm sure you've done further research to know better. So you didn't further tweet that way back then the Republicans and the Democrats, what the parties stood for was a little different back then. (laughs) You left you left you left that out. (laughs) Right. It's like and that's going to lead me. I'm telling you, I'm obsessed about all this. So when I saw Sahai do this and stick up for Kanye and his fuckity fuck shit. It reminds me of Crook and the shit he's doing, but we'll talk about that later. Everybody's sticking up for their guy, regardless of of the optics of shit. Side, I don't understand that, but we'll put that to the side. Back to this Kanye tweet with Candace Brown. Owens, I think her last name is. Candace Owens, I apologize. I'm not purposely getting anyone's name wrong. Uh, Am I off base in in my start to this? No, No, I I don't think so. Now, this has been... This has been in the works for quite some time with... Mr. West. So I guess, what am I really angry at? <laughs> this just, is what I'm fed up. <laughs> That's this is it. what I'm angry at. Let me tell you guys what I'm what I'm angry at because a couple of people tweeted some real stupid shit to me, and it's too stupid for me to even repeat. But the problem here is this. Oh, and I hate to sound like this guy because I'm not this guy. Kanye West is one of our more prominent black voices. And he used that voice to speak toward black issues. And not only did we appreciate that from him, but it kind of it kind of accelerated his pop star career. We put him there. Yeah. We did that. Consumers. The, the, the themes on college dropout were significant to that. Yeah. Do not doubt the power in consume consumption. And the buyer, we did that. Yeah, 
Kanye with the funny two polos on and we didn't understand and the Louis backpack that Beanie and Dame thought was a little weird, but the beats were fire. <laughs> <laughs> we put that nigga there. That nigga's a musical genius. For me, it's very unfortunate that now I got to get into all of this other shit with him. The side meetings with, with Trump. Listen, let me. here's a hot take. I don't think it's by coincidence that some of some of his more famous friends are distancing themselves from him. Hey, I don't have anything to back that up. I have nothing to support that at all. All I know is this. Y'all heard 444. We don't need to talk about it. Y'all heard that album. Y'all see Swiss Beats roller skating around black museums and setting up foundations in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. And y'all already know the shit Puff is on. There's a few more really prominent black voices out there that are trying to do some things differently to affect black people differently. I even hate that I, this podcast sound like I'm on some political preaching shit, but I, it's very important to me because it seemed like Kanye is the only person that consistently gets a pass. So when will black people say, nah, nah, nah? And all people could say to me is, well, if his album is fire, he better hope it's fire. Huh? What do you mean if his <laughs> album is fire? I don't understand what the... F Wait, then go get Sabrina Claudio out the garbage. Because I liked her music. Mm. I did. Hey, well, hey, hey, you, wait, worry, hold up. Difference. They trying to get rid of Daniel Caesar now, too. Let me hit the air horn in this bitch. <laughs> what are you, you doing? <clears throat> he also follows uh, the Candace Owens lady. Oh. That was enough for people. They went to her page. They said Daniel Caesar follows her. Get this backwood looking nigga out of here too. Yeah, sometimes, you gotta, sometimes you gotta follow the, the opposition. <laughs> Just hit this backwood. <laughs> That's funny. I read that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Y'all know I'm a huge Daniel Caesar fan. This backwood. But y'all know. Y'all know, like? know the second that that these niggas fall out of our favor, we gonna tell the truth. <laughs> 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 no, but Kanye gets a pass because people have grown with his music for quite some time. They were 13, 14 when he first came out and attached themselves to him as a person, not just his music. So it's a little different than a Sabrina Claudio who just came out or a Daniel Caesar that just came out. Well, he was and also And Kanye was speaking to the opposite of what he's speaking about now. Right. That's which why is why it's a little weird when someone raps uh, my mother was arrested for the sit-ins with that in my blood I was born to be different and then now saying, "You know, I really like how this Candace Owens chick thinks." Right. It's just a complete 180. And people are shocked by it. Yep. And and let me say, I'm not mad at you, Kanye, for liking the way that this young woman thinks. I'm, I'm indifferent. But I think you're too much of a genius to not understand the impact of finishing the sentence. Because if you don't tell us exactly what you like about how this young woman thinks, it's going to leave us to just dig into how she thinks. And when we dig into how she thinks, it's not cute. <laughs> So what yeah. specific portion of her brain are you admiring? <laughs> and that's the thing. He just put one sentence. He's now putting himself against everything that woman thinks. If he would have got a bit more into detail, he may have gotten less negative feedback. So here we are, strategic marketing, the same way I accused uh, M M's handlers of uh, attach uh, attaching a, a rollout onto the racial climate. I mean, I'm accusing Kanye of the same thing. <laughs> For sure. Just on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum, Eminem was talking to black black people and fucking with us, and Kanye is fucking with the white people and the people with the money. <laughs> yeah, Kanye makes. He ain't think about y'all. He don't even t like. Hey, like many of you have said, he don't even talk to y'all until it's time to sell something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kanye, yeah, he's, but he's he, quiet but about all this free thinking shit and issues with black people, whether B. Candace Owens. Uh, point of view or someone else's. He only does that when an album or a sneaker is coming out. He's dead quiet until then. Yeah, so you can't say how you like how that woman thinks when you're quiet all the time. But for a while now, I've just been feeling like Kanye, you know, he's in a different space mentally and in his life. I don't think that he's he's not speaking for the same people he started out speaking for, making music for the same people he started out making music for. Like now Kanye, what Kanye's doing now to, from what I'm just looking at is He's doing everything for the, the rich white kids. 
even from fashion, he's making them look cool. Like you know what I mean? Like he's he's giving them that cool factor. It, the music, you know, like the way kids party now. It's like it's every nothing is really for what it started out as. Like it, the sound is different, the look is different, he looks different. I mean, it's like. You know, so you got to understand that it's definitely something has changed. No, I don't have to understand shit. You're absolutely right in what you're saying. My issue with what you're saying is he's aware of it. See, it's not oh, yeah. it's not us speculating sure in aware. a room when when he when when because I went and revisited the life of Pablo to see how it sounded with my new ears, my my new he oh he likes her ears, <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that too. Um, well, we were talking on the weekend. Do you feel Kanye has been trying to be accepted by white people his whole career? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, fact, fact, hey, uh, big facts. <laughs> that's a fact. Facto. What, what are people saying that's cool? <laughs> it's a fact. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Even within college dropout, or do you think there was a specific time he was trying? Because I, I think the topics on that college dropout album may not have been I'm trying to be accepted by white people but move on in late registration and it tends to take a curve that no one really saw up until that we have this new information I'm not giving him that 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 pass nor will I give him a trolling pass I can't look at your journey I gotta look at the result Mm -hmm. and if I'm looking at the end result it looks like it looks like you used niggas for your own agenda (laughs) and there's and and let let me just say nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with using people for your own agenda. Uh, and that's what him and Trump have in common. <laughs> right. Mm. Like, I'm not angry at him, the person. I'm only using him to bring up the discussion of why we allow it. And we don't have to answer that. But I don't just he's producing a Nas album. Let me tell you, I'm excited about it. Yeah. On paper. If it happens on, on paper, I'm really excited about it. Uh, Let me just say that I don't think any of those albums are coming out on those dates. I'm just gonna say that now. You might be right, but wouldn't they have to? I'm skeptical. No, no. Why? You can't even make that announcement. You can't even make that type of announcement. Sure. Well, I guess he can see Kanye. You could. Can. <laughs> what? You can. Abs- he can absolutely make that announcement. Yeah, but since he's they're, on they're Twitter, I don't out. think he's going against album dates. Yeah, they're on coming Twitter. out. They're coming out. Even in, even if they come out maybe a week apart from the date he said. These projects are coming out. No, we I'm know. not saying they're not coming out. I don't think they're coming in out. In June? In, no. No. I don't think so. All right. We'll see. Well, all right. So, but off of that for a second, we know Tiana's album is done. Mm. I mean, she's been working on that for a minute because I on this podcast have said I'm waiting for it. Mm. Um, we could assume Push's album is done. <laughs> I don't think that there, I don't think there ever was a K- Kid Cudi and Kanye West album. No, I, I think, think that Kanye West was working on an album. And then him and Kid Cudi got cool again, and Kid Cudi came in and gave him all the energy like like he's done before. And then he came up with songs that maybe didn't go with the other songs, and then he had to split the shit up. Yeah, I think that's exactly. So now Kid Cudi, exactly he took the songs that he did with Cudi and put it out, and that's seven songs on the album. And now his other album is seven songs. What other reason would there be for him to put out projects that are max seven songs? Especially when a few years ago he told us why it's so important and he'd never deviate from 10 songs. He did that around the My Name Is My Name uh, album because everybody, the Pusha fans were beefing. Mm-hmm. Um, so seven songs is a little is a little weird, but I am going to listen to it. I mean, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm going to listen to it. Am I going to buy it? Fuck no. I will not. And I might listen to it off on Rory's phone. I don't know. I can't. I don't know that I'm gonna stream it. I might wait for Ice to hit the group chat with the link. I am not paying Kanye West because I see what you do when I give you my money, and that's the way America works, people. All the really rich people, all they do is get to the other side of the money. They spend the money and race it and get to the other side of it before other people. All the wealthy people, they get all the money. Yeah, I'm not doing that with him. He's not getting mine. I am done. I'm taking it back. I'm at a crossroads. Pusha will get my money. Maybe. I don't know. Because that might go to Kanye, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to buy a Sahai album, but boy, is he a lost nigga sometimes. The fuck is it? Boy, that tweet was disappointing. I'm not getting rid of Daniel Caesar yet. That album was too fire. <laughs> That's not, not, off of, not off of the follow, my G. Well, I don't know. It, it didn't worry you a little bit that Kanye was producing all these albums? Because you get Kanye a specific sound. Every album has not sounded the same. He's had his errors, if you will quote it. 
What if it's a shitty era and we end up getting five shitty albums that sound the same? Ain't but a shitty era. <laughs> he's yeah. just gonna so. he's just gonna convince people that we're, our ears are just ten years behind. <laughs> yeah, you don't even know the masterpiece that you're listening to. That's yet. true. No, I'm, See, I'm so a- now now that you said that, Maul, let's get into. I went and revisited the life of Pablo again. Mm-hmm. Where does that album rank in Kanye's discography? At the very bottom. It's it's low for me. Yeah, I like the album. Oh, so that is the consensus. I'm not coming here with like a hot take. No, you're not. No. no. It's a good. I don't think it's a bad album, but it's certainly low in his discography. But it's he may the have one of the best yeah, his discographies ever. It's low, but well, his, somebody else's, it might that, be that's the number best. one. Oh well, one hundred percent. We're hey on this podcast. If you're new, we only judge people by their work. Them. I'm not comparing him to other people. When I went back and listened, that album sounded a little rushed. It sounds like a mixtape to me. It's all over the place. A yeah, he took fucking designer song. I didn't see a designer release date in May in Good Music Month. <laughs> you was the only one that that, that even crossed their mind. Until you said that to me, I was like, "Oh fuck yeah!" I guess, I guess he was <laughs> I the only one left off. That's well, what I well, y'all remember too. on the la- on the podcast. I think it, it was a little while ago, maybe two weeks ago. Remember, designer put a speed of freestyle over God's plan, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, what's up? <laughs> so I was waiting for the the announcement, but <laughs> you thought that was the teaser, the warmest for the announcement, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> a designer a designer's a cooking designer something up teaser <laughs> that's crazy the biggest teaser is trash <laughs> right that's Rory saying that designer <laughs> what? that's what I said I thought it was kind of fire <laughs> look how phony I that's am that's what you listen to in the crib uh so back back to Kanye right uh so back to him being calculated so he calls Charlemagne and Charlemagne who who hangs his fucking hat on not being industry and not having industry relationships, which I believe him. Charlemagne gets on a plane, and what does he do? He takes his fucking ass right over to Kanye to listen to the album ahead of time and do an interview. Let me tell you something. I'd have done the same. I was going to say. I'd have done the exact same thing. I Hey, let me tell you something. I don't think that's doing a job. I'd have done the exact same thing. So I just want to point that out. But, But this is where it's different. This is where it's different. I would have came back with something. My problem is, I know why Kanye wanted to fly Charlemagne out and for him to hear the album and to kick it. So he can have an ally. Right. Pretty big ally to have in New York media. Right. I know why they parked where they parked and took that picture for Some it. Really all shitty all of that too. is being calculated. And now Kanye, and now Charlemagne flies back and ever since that meeting, he has been telling us Kanye tidbits. But but the problem here is Charlemagne is one of our most prominent voices in media as black people. And if he's not going to call out the fuck shit, then damn. Am I the only one feeling like, like it's just a little, it's a little compromise? Wait, don't say nothing. Charlemagne's been calling, I mean, uh, for not Charlemagne, Kanye's been calling Ebro a whole lot. <laughs> Anybody has. been seeing them tweets? Yeah, I have. And I, I listened to Ebro's recap of their conversation. Somebody tell me what new information y'all got about Kanye from all of the conversations he has had with Ebro. Nobody answered it, let me tell you. None. You have gotten no new information. Uh, you, got the click, you got the clickbait. Kanye West says, I love Donald Trump. That is not new information. That's my point. You are, that is exactly my point. We knew that, which means that Ebro, another one of our prominent media voices, is watching this fuck shit, and I'm not going to say he's complicit. No, he he was very vocal. I know, I know, he he was against it. I guess my problem is, I need more than that from Charlemagne and Ebro, and and in this on this occasion, this is years in the making. Why we kill everybody else and not him? Yeah, yeah. I can't speak on any of these guys, so I'll let y'all have this. Uh, I'm shocked. I thought maybe Charlemagne had said something since these Kanye West tweets, and I just didn't see it. I figured he would have. Ebro, I'll, I'll stand. Ebro definitely was vocal about how wrong Kanye was about that. That's why Kanye called him or was yelling in the background when he was talking to Sai. I would have liked some new information. <laughs> I mean, like I for think, a guy, I think, fuck, for a guy, I'm wrong. For a guy that has an album coming out, I would have liked some new information. If you guys are f- gonna fucking compromise your integrity, because that is what's happening, and that leads me to me. I'm the only honest media guy there is. 
<laughs> I know that sounds nuts. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I'm the only one. I'd like support in this Kanye thing I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't be honest no more. When, you, when you're honest now, you, you're a hater. That's the new thing. It's true. That's been the thing for a little while though. Yeah, like you, I don't, I don't know when that started, but like you say something that's honest and people call you a hater. Like I don't get it, but you know. All right, so let's 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 get into the, uh, some of the releases really quickly and and get off of that. Let's focus. Let's focus. Uh, shift our attention to mute the music that I will bootleg from Rory's phone, from Rory's five C. Soon as fucking May <laughs> My June gets here. <laughs> um, what's the first one? Oh, the first one is Kanye solo. Yeah. Right. Then the next week is him Cuddy. Right. Next week is Push. Next week is Tiana and there's a Nas album in there somewhere, right? Actually, I think no, Push no. is first. Push is first. Yeah. Push is May twenty fifth. Kanye is June first. Kanye Cuddy is June eighth. Nas is uh, June fifteenth. Tiana Taylor is June twenty second. I don't believe none of those dates. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I, I, believe, I believe all them. the ones, and but the Nas one, because that's dependent on that Nas. one's not coming out. That's dependent. I'm, on I, Nas. I gotta, I gotta see that one. But I Nas think, has been a lot more visible. Yeah, I gotta see it. Let me tell you this, Maul. Let's pretend that that in his brain, those albums are coming out that month. What does this say that he's not thinking about June twenty fifth at all? Isn't that Drake's date? Uh, I keep saying did Drake, no, Drake put out an official? He just said June yeah. twenty eighteen. He didn't give a date. Them shits all might be five songs too. Let's let's be clear about that. It's Pusha dead. cannot put out a project that's five songs. And Tiana Taylor won't put out a project that's five songs. Not with her show with him on on uh, VH one. It's not going to happen right now. <clears throat> the people that can afford to will, i.e., Kanye and Cuddy, Cuddy nice. which will. Nah, nah. Nas could put out seven songs and, and we'll be happy. We'll be happy. <laughs> and we'll be happy with Kanye's seven songs. Right. What was we talking about before this? Uh, Drake, where does he fall? Oh, yeah. I, I was just confused about that because it's like, damn, all right, we got Cole. Cole got his numbers and dipped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Yeah. Smart. That's, before that's, everything implodes. Yeah, Let me just yeah. get this off. Yeah. Hey, y'all, this Friday. I don't know what these niggas is on, right. but y'all going to get this, this work. Right. <laughs> uh, so that was hard how he did that, but normally people like to stay away from Drake when he drops, and with the way he about to drop, you see he about to do something stupid. You just know he is. So I'm shocked that Kanye did that. Where's his his drop in that release? Uh, Early second, uh, yeah. <laughs> June uh, June first. <laughs> Yeah, come on, Walt. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, I don't believe June, any of those dates. June first. I don't yeah, believe that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they, 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 I, we have to start calling out when niggas ducking the smoke. Yeah, well, I said on this podcast I wanted Drake and Kanye to go head to head on the same day in June. Nah, J- Drake. Drake will outsell Kanye. I agree that he will. You don't easily. fucking. Well, yeah, he's gonna have to sing. Yeah, Drake's easily. not down with Candace Owens. Yeah. <laughs> Drake would never. He's giving out money and shit. Yeah, Drake is on the top. Dr- Dr- hey, Drake is still winning the Nice Guy Awards. Let me just say, he's yeah, still he's, up. He's back. Yeah, he's up. He took some time off, but he's back. Yeah, so that's all I had to say about that. Uh, about that month of June. Wait, wait, wait. No, it's not. No, it's not. Something else is coming. Who else big is coming? Pause. And this makes for June. You know what? We said June? it was going to be a wild summer. We did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Remy. Remy. More. We're not fighting about Remy because I don't really <laughs> want to talk about Remy. All I'm saying is she has a new song coming and this is the one. Now, then we could fight. I was just telling Sin this. The Mint Condition record that last week when you asked who's still listening to Remy and Rory said all the way up. As soon as he said that, I was going to say the Mint Condition record, but when everyone really laughed at him, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's with Chris Brown on it, right? The Mint Condition? Yeah. yeah. But that's the record that they put out. And I like Mint Condition, so I like that record, but clearly it didn't work really. But it's summertime now. A Boogie's on this record. That says that th- this is the one that we're leaning on. She's looking sexy in the pictures. I'm just telling y'all what I've noticed. That's label stuff. That's label stuff. She looks a little different, like something got done again. Same with Nikki. Nikki looks a little different. Something got done again. Uh, so that after this record, then you could talk your shit. We could fight, have the Remy Ma fight all day long after this one if this don't work. Because she might be in a little bit of trouble if this don't work. And that's all I'm going to say. That's it. We ain't got to fight about it. I know your stance. I, I'm chilling. <laughs> I, 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 I want to hear it. I'm anxious to hear the record. I don't know if I want to hear Remy and A Boogie. I don't be rushing I, I do. A Boogie well, records because I'm old. I want to hear it. Yeah, it's a Bronx yeah. record. Yeah, I like A Boogie. 
Yo, Rory be trying to sneak and be from the Bronx sometimes. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Do I? I'm gonna keep it a buck, man. I love him. He's way too big on a boogie to be from uh, uh, Queens, Jersey I, I City. I like. <laughs> I like a boogie. I think he's nice. I think his album was really good. I think he's progressive for New York because he still sounds like a New Yorker, but sounds like the climate now. I think a boogie's all right, man. All right, I'm forced to address uh, a good friend of mine, a good Peter Rosenberg, because uh, I want to read a tweet to you guys. Um, that I saw when I was being nosy. Someone tweeted, oh, because I started my whole round of applause for me, man. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, man. You guys are awesome. Appreciate it, We're man. We're not applauding. <laughs> yes, y'all are. Yeah, there's a video. <laughs> Turn it up now. Uh, over the weekend, I released uh, episode one and two of my new series, The Pull Up. It's where I invite a bunch of niggas that I would never have brunch with over for brunch. <laughs> Not really a brunch guy anyway. It's a, that's a Rory's thing. But, uh, and I want to thank everybody out there for really, really uh, supporting me throughout this journey. Those numbers are great. And that's all I have to say because I'm not really good at thanking people for things. But man, man, hit the round of applause again. Come on. Come on. You guys deserve it. This one's for you guys. This is for us. huh? Now, with that said, I read a tweet, right? Somebody, somebody was bigging me up, so I saw it because I always see those. And they said... Uh, I have to say this. At Joe Button has created three shows that are hits because this pull-up show is a smash. Now, they're referring to Everyday Struggle, the podcast, and the pull-up. Right. Then someone says, keep it 100. He also created that late-night show Peter Rosenberg is on. But we won't speak about that. Right? <clears throat> okay. That's when I would have walked away from my phone. I would have left it alone. But then you're you. But here comes Peter Rosenberg. <laughs> Actually, man. This is a story that will go down <laughs> in the love and hip-hop history books. But what is the truth? And what is a lie? Peter Rosenberg replies to almighty LOH and says, <laughs> in caps, LOL. Let me just tell everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> Why, wait? <laughs> no, you can't stop at LOL, man. And say, and say, let me tell everybody out there. Yeah, I'm about? telling you that when you start with a LOL in caps, you're not it, laughing. It has the reverse effect. Right. You're, you're not, not laughing, my G. Right. You're not laughing. You have a, the straightest of faces on. Right. But okay, so he said LOL in caps. Then he said, and I would have I would have never guessed he was going there. You know how long this show has been in the works, question mark? How long? He didn't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I actually created Joe's podcast, but let's not talk about that. Don DeMarco. A lot of people not talking about let me this. Hit, let me turn down the gunshot for the people at work, <laughs> but let me hit the gunshot. He lied! Y'all niggas worship him. <laughs> Lie. I'm about to get in my bag. <laughs> Yo, pass me my bag. Never <laughs> ever yeah. said nothing about him. It's mad shit in my bag, too. You don't even know what Fuck I'm coming out the lie. bag with. That's why the bag is such a dope slang, because what's the nigga about to go in his bag? Like, what's in there? <laughs> nobody, wanna, nobody wants to tell the truth. No one. Not a fucking soul. Just me. All right. This is what I say here, because I, I will not refute what he's saying. But what I will say is I think that some, I think my definition of create is different from some corporate white people's. <laughs> well. Yo, that's what I learned from that. In Peter Rosenberg's head, Rory can probably help me out in this conversation. I am positive that he believes that probably. Mm -hmm. So maybe he don't know what the word create means. 
That's possible. Dog just won't shut the fuck up. Some son of Sam. Well, shit going the birds on. are a part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> every every week they're like, "Yo, anybody hear the birds?" <laughs> I'm like, "Damn, they don't Listen, birds and story. recording in nature and shit. <laughs> Fucking project birds." <laughs> uh, what was I saying just now? Uh, that Rosenberg actually believes that he started. The Rory, podcast. do you think that he actually believes that? Tell the truth. Yes, right. Uh, yes, for the, for the people that no. th- that don't know what went on a million years ago, I said to myself, "I want to do a podcast." I then called Marissa, who said, uh, "Who said yes? Let's fucking I'm down. Let's do a podcast." Funny. Peter Rosenberg said he's about to start a network. I then went to go sit with Peter Rosenberg. He gave me all these grandiose ideas of things that he could do the same way people, executives and people in this business do when they court you. So we started, we did about six, seven, eight, nine, ten episodes. And I noticed Peter Rosenberg did absolutely nothing. I then distanced myself and my podcast far away from Peter Rosenberg. Hmm. Now, is that him creating this podcast? (laughs) No, I wouldn't say that. So why is he on? Pete, Pete, Pete. Pete, Pete, and that is my problem with fucking Pete. So now, Pete, let me help you out because I love you and you're a friend of mine. This podcast, I'm going to spend a lot of time helping people I love. You happen to be one of those people. Peter Rosenberg, don't tell people that your late night show has been in the works for a million years because that is not true. At the start of Everyday Struggle, when Noah Beverly and myself were, oh no, Noah Calloway, whatever Noah's name is, when him and I were sitting around throwing names back and forth for co-hosts, your name was one of them, you're good friends with Noah, I expect the white Jewish people to be good friends with each other, that's not a shock there, but that tells me it was no fucking late night show being thought of when I stepped foot in Complex. That's what that tells me, because I obsess over, over things, right? So that's one. It also tells me that shortly after I started and I started funneling all these amazing ideas in the building, you probably weren't a thought of then. So I'm probably talking about information that preceded you, (laughs) Peter Rosenberg. So you shouldn't take offense when people are bigging up me. You really shouldn't, especially if you're going to turn around and say that you started my podcast, which means that you knew I was ill. (laughs) (laughs) You knew some ill shit was on the way. <laughs> Take a minute to big myself up here. And that's my that's my other problem when I think about these corporate companies. Let me just go on a, a quick rant again. So let's say, let's pretend that I'm right. And I had this amazing idea. And that idea turned into Peter Rosenberg on his late night show. ASAP Rocky. Uh... And Terry Crews were, have been the guests there. Peter Rosenberg's late <laughs> night show. <laughs> What's up, Mo? No, man, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> yo, Mo, that's, that's, yo that, I, that's part of your little sick, twisted genius. Because you don't really say nothing, but it says so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy shit going on out here, man. Peter Rosenberg's. Uh, open late night shows numbers are not the sexiest. Sexy is a good word. I'm not sure that Complex cares. Peter Rosenberg's show, and I'm telling this to all the up and coming content creators out there. This is my message to you guys. Peter Rosenberg's show, because I, I'm not going to ever, I, I would, wouldn't dare call it a failure even though the numbers would say it's a failure. Peter Rosenberg's late night show had ad and sponsor dollars before it ever aired. With failing numbers. (laughs) That was part of my everyday struggle beef over at Complex. I have a lot of integrity in the content, and sometimes I'm not willing to sacrifice that over corporate matters so it did hit a little mushy button inside of me someone was cutting onions when i just invited niggas to the crib for brunch and niggas hit half a million in 24 hours for 48 hours 48 for 48 hours man hit a round of applause button for and you know y'all know i'm not numbers guy but it more says i am 
<laughs> I got I got a numbers guy with me. Ian's a numbers guy. A nigga calls me every morning with numbers. <laughs> and you relate the numbers too. only when they support my arguments. That's what that's what numbers are for. <laughs> that's, only when that's they why your that's arguments. why I don't pay attention to numbers because all they do is support whatever someone's argument is, especially in the uh, smart information era. You go on Google and find anything to support what you got to say. True. Uh, let me finish my Rosenberg rant. Because when I was thinking about that, that led me to how much I love Peter Rosenberg and his sports commentary and his wrestling commentary. I love it. He sounds very much in his element. He sounds very comfortable and he has very strong perspectives and opinions outside of hip hop. Only in hip hop do I, do I feel like those opinions aren't really his. Mm. I meant to hit the gunshot. <laughs> 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 this has a different effect. <laughs> applause and gunshots we're shooting at the crowd <laughs> yeah yeah in, in hip-hop pete can come off come off as the white guy who just is sticking to the backpacker opinion and sometimes he deviates from that like when he wants to promote little fuckity fuck whatever his name was so pete i'm gonna say this to you in friendly competition leave my name out of your tweets because i'm coming Gunshot. Now, with that said, Cole. What you thought? Know what I learned about Cole? He looks like Savion Glover. He does look like Savion Glover. I saw the video. But we knew that already, Cole. Uh, Maul, you were saying that last week like it was groundbreaking. We knew that. I've been saying why Cole is on his uh, homeless swag like couture, homeless swag. Homeless chic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to start fucking acknowledging Rory's funny joke. That was funny, man. Mm. Cole might be the most difficult man to critique in hip-hop. <laughs> he is. Without a doubt. Last time Cole came out, I purposely avoided critiquing it. Mm. One, I didn't like it, so I didn't want to critique it. Right. And by the time I learned that I didn't like it, it was late in the game. So I didn't feel like I needed to come back months later and fucking talk bad about another black man who maybe just had a quick outing or a bad outing, in my opinion. Cole fans will, will never say that because Cole fans like that project. But that's part of the reason why Cole is so hard to judge because of Cole fans. Cole fans are brutal. I hate Cole well, that's, fans. That's where he gets a lot of his hate because it's just fun to antagonize Cole fans. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with Cole. It has to do with his fans. When I, so, in my, so my analysis of Cole and this album led me to this really weird epiphany. Uh, Cole, and this album particularly, is reminding me, I find a lot of things, a lot of similarities between him and I <laughs> okay. that I never really paid attention to. So, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's hear it. Parks hit the group chat and said Cole could probably benefit from an executive producer or two or a beat from other people or a feature or two. Something like that. Yeah, something, something along those say, lines. Say, I don't want to fuck your point up, so you say it because I, I mean, agree. I think, I think features for one. I mean, I don't think he's – damn, I don't want to get killed by Cole fans. He sings a lot. I'm not, think, I'm not mad at him for singing. Yeah, me either. But I think that breaks up a lot. I don't want to call it rapidy rap because Cole – it's not lyrical miracle shit. It's just good. It's good rapping. Yeah, but um, it's, his, it's his voice singing with his voice rapping over his production a lot of times. It's a lot. It's <laughs> which, a lot so it's a lot of him. Which people will tell you if you're trying to make a hit record, you need a breakup between the verse and the hook with a different tone or a different voice. That's why features always are usually hit records where you throw a chick on the hook or you throw a singer yeah. on the hook because it breaks up and makes the song sound better. So when Cole says, or not Cole, because he doesn't say it, but when other people say that uh, Forest Hills Drive was the first album to ever go five times platinum with no features, that's great, because boy, that album is great. But other than that, I would stop saying that. Like, yeah. I would stop, like he's saying now, no features or such. I, w I would stop saying that, right. me, personally. But in trying to say that about him, I, I just glossed over my career, and that same thing is true in my career. Mm. I could have used a feature or two, and I could have used an executive producer or two. And I could have used some other input inside of the studio outside of my own brain. Or outside of our brain trust. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, let me chill there. I, can ex I, I, I get it. 
I understand that part, right? Then it hit me as I'm listening to the album. I'm like, damn, this sounds like everyday struggle. <laughs> Elaborate the whole, everything he talked about on the album it, in terms of because there's so many different nuances in this album where he's finding different ways to address the new generation, right? All over this album, similar to Everyday Struggle, okay? Right? And I only am going to stand firm in that when at the end he makes takes the love and hip hop jab, which I do think was a jab at me, which I do think <laughs> it wasn't, I think it was it, not a jab at you, but I think it was. <laughs> And let me finish my point before y'all laugh at me, because I'll, I'll forget it. Um, he was explaining the career trajectory of shit, right? right. To the new fuckity fucks, much like I attempted to, to, to do with Yachty, right? In a different way. Um, but if I'm listening to the album thinking that a lot of the content is everyday struggle-ish, and then you get to the end in that particular record, which reminds me of one particular interview, right? And then I'm think to J. Cole. J. Cole has said that before. He's already expressed his his sentiments about people that appear on Love and Hip Hop. Mm. He's done it at least two times recent. And when I say recent, I mean last two projects. Right. So that leads me to why would you say it a third time unless there was a reason to say it? Because I do believe you're a great MC. Great MCs are like great spades players. Great spades players don't play a card without having a reason for playing that card. Same exact thing. So that's what led me there. It could be a loose assumption. I'm not standing firm in it, but in my brain, that's happened. I that's think, happened I there. I think that's just a metaphor for rap careers that maybe didn't work, and now they're doing something they may not want to do. They didn't have another option. I think it's just a metaphor for that. I don't think that was the case for you or for other people, but in the scheme of the eight years that Love & Hip Hop has been around, well, that I think that's Well, that would have been my, my response to that. Like, J. Cole should stop saying that. Well. It's not a diss anymore. Eh, it's, it's, still it's gotten nice. worse. <laughs> there was a, a peak of love and hip hop, which I think was around your era. Now, where it was now, cool, now where... you won't know. It's not there anymore because now they don't even have people that these type of people would address on there with the exception of Remy. They wouldn't even address them as opposed to yeah. a Jim Jones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saigon. Uh, I could, there's a bunch of them that have been there. That's what I mean, I guess, yeah, when yeah. I say that. Right. No, I just think it was like, a metaphor for Cole to get everyone to understand when rappers run out of options, this may be what they have to do. What I don't do you, think it was a, a, a specific love and hip-hop shot. I think it was just a metaphor for what you have to do if you can't rap it. Well, I, don't, I don't want Smoke or Cole anyway, so it's cool. <laughs> um, what did y'all think? What do y'all think about that Counted Up, the Counted Up record? And I only asked because when I first heard that record, I was saying, what the fuck is Cole doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, then I def that definitely didn't sound like a typical J. Cole. And record. then I had to listen to it a few more times before I understood that he was indeed trying to do something. That's the other thing that reminded me of me Cole fans give Cole the pass of knowing that he is trying to do something before they figure out what he's trying to do right Cole has afforded himself the benefit of the doubt that most people have not and I think that's why his fans become very annoying to other people because other people are not hearing it through those same ears much like Joe Budden fans have annoyed people my entire career about Joe Budden because they heard something in me that the casual listener just did not hear See, see how yeah. I, yeah. No, I, I think Budden fans and Cole you fans see how are, I piece that together yeah I think you're right there um add that to to Cole's entire introverted style and and how I do think that he's socially aware along with some other things it just reminded me reminded me of me even even the, even the knock on him that he puts people to sleep in his voice I was never the biggest fan of my rap voice either I think that was a big detriment for me. One week I was coming in here to ask y'all, y'all top five rap voices, because I think that's such an underrated topic in hip hop. It's very it important. Rap voices. Yeah, it's very important. Isn't that important? Hell yeah. Super important. I can, can you think what of, some a, of the a, best? a great MC that doesn't have a good voice? Me. I think people would argue that you have a good voice. I think you have voice. a good voice. I don't. It's crass. My voice is crass. I have a lisp. I can't enunciate properly. In my head, I, I rap with so much diction and so proper, but when I start rapping, my voice, I just can't. I can't do it. So I hate it. Everyone but, hates their own voice, though. So. No, but yeah, nah, I hate but my some own niggas. Voice. Yeah. I hate my voice. No, nah, but your voice is trash for real, my though. My voice is trash. <laughs> I but, hate my fucking voice. But some niggas could get away with like a trash verse because their voice is dope. Or some niggas' yeah. verse is just. I don't well, know, some, people, is, some people play to their voice like. I like Young Thug simply of his cadence and his voice and how that sounds. I don't particularly care what he has to say. 
because it sounds so great when he says it. Yeah, he, he's very passionate I, with his whatever he's saying. <laughs> Real quick, speaking of Young Thug, yeah, I really so. like that Young Thug record with Nicki Minaj, but I don't see anyone talking about it. I didn't hear it. Oh, yeah, I'm not even sure what you're talking about. It's a Nicki record or a Thug It's a record? Young Thug record. Okay. Wow. See, that's kind of my point. Let me, let me play it. Y'all talk to each other. Damn, I'm shocked. Well, do we want to have the actual conversation who your top five favorite rap voices are? Q-Tip got to be like top five. Tip's somewhere. up there. Scarface is up there. Scarface for sure. Kiss is up there. Grand Poobah. Yeah. Ross. Yeah. Big. Ghostface for me. All right. Ghost this is, Dave, yeah, Ghost is definitely up there. This is Young Thug Anybody featuring Nicki Minaj. This was part of that rollout. That shit sound hard. <laughs> that shit is hard. He was about to go he there. On that shit. He, yeah, he was he was about to go there. That's why I was shocked that I don't see people talking about that record and Nicky Body the third verse. So it's confusing to me that as cool as Young Thug is to the kids, nobody is talking about this song. I wonder what the disconnect with him is. I thought he would be super duper duper star by now. Well, there was that whole rich gang shit. Okay. So that that took a minute. I um, think he puts out albums kind of sloppily. It's like it's about to come out. All right, I just threw it out. Or here's a date. It doesn't come out. Like he's never really put energy behind putting out an actual yeah. project. I feel like his career probably lacks structure. That yeah, that's probably the word I was looking for. Because the talent is there and the records are there, but it seems a little inconsistent. You know what it is too. He doesn't really do a lot of uh, press interviews. He's not that type of person. Yeah, but we're in a time where who does a lot of press and yeah, interviews? Jake well, he Cole, he Jake Cole does. Do shit. Yeah, but he does. I mean, but Cole's a different art. Like, but Thug, Thug would be at that nothing. same spot if he had been consistent ever since that Ti record came out. Ain't about the money. If he had been consistent since that record, mm. he might be in a position where it maybe don't matter today. Like today, he's. I feel like he's still going through the 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 new act routine of seeing how records work when he puts them out. Mm. <laughs> And yeah, he, should. he should be past that. Future doesn't really do press particularly. No, nah, he don't do no damn press. Yeah, but that's my thing. Future doesn't need to do press. Like, he's at that point. And I, I think Thug is that type of artist, too, though. Like, I think he's that talented to where. But he just needs to do just a little more of a, of selling himself a little bit to the people. Because people like him, but I, they just kind of, like, still on the fence a little bit. Okay. But I think he's super. Like, I think. He's one of the best artists out. He, of, of the kids that do that style of music, yeah, he's my favorite. Like, he's sure. definitely like that guy. Well, that was that was leading to my next question, and then I want to U-turn and get back to this Cole. Did did all the Lils kind of get rid of that wave of music? Low key, and nobody talking about it. Like earlier, we laughed at Designer, but that was a wave. <laughs> right. Young Thug to wave. Future was a wave. There was a bunch of people in that wave, and now with all the Lils, Liling, it, it seems like that no, no, it's still there, stuff. but it doesn't seem like the dominant wave that it did, and only three years ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That was only three years ago. Yeah. All right, that's it. That, that's that's. I mean, all but I that's had you there. know how quickly waves go in hip hop. It's not far from what's happened in the past as far as what's popular, not what's gonna last. I didn't think that wave would be gone so soon, but. Yeah, I feel it's you. still somewhat there. Um, so Cole, Cole is projected to do over four hundred. Man, Cole is amazing. That's the other reason Cole reminds me of me because I feel like Cole spends five dollars on albums. <laughs> I mean, he does a lot of the beats himself. Right. I don't feel like he spends any money on albums, and he just puts them out. So there's no m real money in marketing and promo. His videos and be fire though. That he's them shooting them. <laughs> oh yeah, he does direct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. God, this nigga is, is doing everything, which I commend. I, I commend him I'm not for. Mad at that. I yeah. commend him that's for it because in my new content creator career shit that I'm doing, what I'm learning is that there's so much I have to learn. Like as a rapper, 
like I, I I know a lot about rap music, but when you try to venture out into these other fields, there's there's so many little little things that you have to learn if you want to do it yourself, and and be an entrepreneur and a self employed like real businessman. So I commend Cole for sitting down learning how to make a beat, for learning how to shoot a video, for the, even learning the the technical terms that come along with all of this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which. I can give credit to Jim Jones like I did last week of being one of the first rappers to really sit there and try to do everything himself or learn somewhat how to do it. Well, there was a lot of people that uh, prior to to them being that so were vo- being so vocal, being so vocal about doing it. Like, yo, I'm doing my own sessions. I'm directing this video. Yeah, but this is also the thing but about is that a detriment to Cole with that? Maybe because back to what Parks's point, I I would like to hear Cole want some other some other beats. I, I understand his artistry and that his albums are a cohesive thing, and he wants that sound. I get it. He's great at it. For me, I'm not even mad at the production, as, even though a lot of people think that it's you know dull sometimes. I, I just wish that he would have different vocalists, even if they're not stars. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily need Chris Brown, but some different vocal just to break yeah. up. Because even though I do think he's a good singer and I think he's a fucking amazing rapper, I don't. It, it's a lot of Cole, uh, audibly. Mm-hmm. The beats, you know, that's not his voice, so it's yeah. a little. It breaks it up, but uh, I wish that he would occasionally bring in some vocalists, background vocalists, something. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, but I mean, I like the album. Yeah, me too. He definitely switched up his flows. I don't know if that was the point to try to again getting back to the kids. It and, sounded and like to it. Listen. It sounded there like there were some Drake flows on there. There was some new modern. I don't know who started that. It just sounded like flow, he was just trying to show that he could do it. He can do that and yeah. still be, you know, still be saying something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he can give you that cadence. He can give you that vibe, that feel. But he's still saying something though. Like he's still saying some dope shit. Cole is a better. That's my. That's one of my issues with Cole. Cole is a much better MC probably than he is a producer. I think even he would say that. So oh, if yeah. so For if sure. you get with some niggas who are at your level in their craft, they will just bring out something better in you. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll say. But I I was I said that you know years ago when. Wayne was, you know, when it was all in-house production with Manny Fresh and all of that. I had, I said years ago, as soon as Wayne starts getting outside production, he's gonna become a man. And he star. did that. And he did that. And, and that's he what got happened. away from the Manny Fresh sound that that whole in, that camp and started getting production from outside producers and became a megastar. Mm. Mm. I mean, but even, but even then, this is our opinion. Clearly, it's working. Yeah, we can be told because Cole, Cole's yes. numbers show that that works. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no features. Me doing the beats. And, and Manny, that shit works. Man, Manny Fresh worked, by the way. <laughs> that motherfucker He's is a, underrated. Amazing. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Shout out to Manny Fresh and one of the most humble guys you'll ever meet. Shout out to him. But, I mean, what we didn't really dive right into the nineteen eighty five shit with which Joe we talked. You thought that was a diss or not a diss? To who? That well, that's the thing. Well, clearly, homeboy thought it was a diss. It was a diss to somebody. J Cole and Pump a is a diss. is it Pump Pump J Cole and Pump or J Cole and Zan? One of well, those. Well, people blows. would say Pump because I guess Pump had some campaign where it was fuck J Cole and Cole was like I I don't even know who you are. <laughs> that's my other thing with Cole. Cole should not be dissing Lil Pump. I don't think it was a diss. I think he was explaining to all these kids that use him as the escape goat of saying we don't like that lyrical shit. Like this is what happens. Uh, he should have found a way to talk to Lil Pump without letting all the Lil Pump fans know he's talking to Lil Pump. He's just greater than that. Nah, that fucking song is fire though. No, it's the, the song is song fire. Album. It was needed. <laughs> no, the song it is fire. Yeah. I, don't know, I, don't I just want to know what are these like? Do these Lil not want to make music in the latter part of the career? Do they not want to be relevant in five years? I want Jay no. Cole. No, Lil Pump. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> it. Like they that's the thing. Rele- like Cole, Cole is like they're what thirty one. You don't want to be making music when you're thirty one. These kids just want to be alive at thirty one. They uh, doing Cole, so much Cole's drugs. Like 30, 33, 34. Okay, do you still, still not yeah, want to yeah. make music at that age? Right. And some of these kids are like twenty five. Right. You know, how quick five years passes. That that, that would be my other. <laughs> you about to be an old head in five years. That would be my other criticisms. I wish that he would make music. Like I feel like he really and he does it really well. But he targets like college age kids a lot. That's his bread and butter. Yeah, I kind of I wish he, he would does. Grow a he, makes bit. Dorm, he makes dorm music. Yeah. yeah. Nah, he does strategic marketing in a backpacker way. He does for sure. He does. I, th- I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Not <laughs> at all. Not well, at no, all. no. He targeted college kids. Those college kids are now graduated in in like yeah, but the, no, the nine to five. Yeah, shit. but he kept talking to them too. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at him for targeting them, but maybe then he, he kept. Left, maybe he got left back. <laughs> Maybe more. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, that's I, I never, I never looked at it that way, my nigga. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all never seen things from that angle, right? 
Maybe got left back. Mm. Uh, are we closing, Cole? I want people to think we're talking bad about him. No, it's a good album. We're oh, not. no, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. can't talk bad about J. Cole. Yes, it's, it's a good album. We enjoy the album, but it's our job to fucking try to get deeper, so that's what we did. <laughs> no, it's, it's really good. That was a rather short J. Cole. The niggas think we'd be shitting on Cole. How can you That's because that? every, they, they're so you defensive about J. Cole. J. Cole. They're, his I was going to say, that was a real on. short, that was a rather brief Cole synopsis. But, but you know what it is? Because for a nigga to at, drop once a blue moon. Yeah, but that's, that's how it is now. You drop a project, we live with it for two weeks, and then it's like, who's next? Right. Yes. That's just what it is now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he got his, he did his numbers. He, you know what I mean? This, it was received well. He's going to tour his ass off. Yeah, he's going to tour. He's going to give us another HBO special. And, you know... He's Damn. gonna continue looking like Savion. That's all. <laughs> Damn, do I want the other HBO special? <laughs> I don't know if I want the if other. If he's directing HBO it, special. it looks like his videos. I'm not sure. The Forest Hills Drive one was dope. It was, but if he give me another HBO special, he got to show me what the neighbors think of him now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to interview the neighbors and see. I'm saying, surely he's went and introduced himself. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get a release for him. <laughs> yeah, what well, yeah. the? His whole last rollout was about the neighbors. Yeah. And what they were thinking about him. I hope they fix that. I hope, I hope they don't think that anymore about J. Cole. <laughs> and how do they wild. think Jermaine is selling the, dope? You can tell he got some wild neighbors. The whole SWAT team went in there. Shit. I would have looked that over there hilarious. and thought something totally different than that's the trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, not at all. Um, all right, so now we have to talk about some news that, that is close to my heart. Dunkin' Donuts is closing? <laughs> what do you think Dunkin' Donuts what It's closing Never that no. We not We not them other niggas New, new, new ports did a <laughs> recall other, We not them other niggas Dunkin' Donuts don't close For race reparations My nigga They know what it is I mean The gunshot for Dunkin' Donuts uh. <laughs> Alright <laughs> <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts uh, And let me apologize To the people listening In their vehicle That the gunshot it's, Are scaring people At the red lights That's my bad But man that shit is addictive When you get this little <laughs> Soundboard thing <laughs> Um, so Crooked Eye has made a major announcement, major announcement, major, major announcement alert that he is no longer in the collective slaughterhouse. Mm. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> That's the music you pick? I wanted an aw, but it's not in here. <laughs> oh. So that's what you get. Uh, aw. What do you guys think? Come on, Parks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, is there still is Slaughterhouse isn't making music currently? Hey, that's my problem. Yeah, when you mentioned fucking Slaughterhouse to niggas that is actually in Slaughterhouse or involved with Slaughterhouse, I they just it. start stuttering. <laughs> I didn't stutter. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> this is this. All right, so let me let me let me let me let me let me talk. No, for, did not you stutter? <laughs> Uh, this is why this is why I don't put too much weight into the Crooked Eye announcement. Hold on, but before you do that, he said. Wait, let's play the announcement. Rory, get the announcement. Yeah, he said the y'all not rapping. Royce just put out music. <laughs> Royce is doing everything. Joel <laughs> rapping. Joel Joel's putting out music. I mean, you you're the only one that's not actively rapping. So I didn't understand that, but you know. I think he meant that we are not rapping as a collective. Oh, okay. Got you. As a group. Got you. And that's the part that's confusing. Because how could you be retiring then? <laughs> if you're retiring and then you go on to say... There, don't play it. Know, if you're retiring and then you go on to say, yeah, Sober Crook loves to rap and they're not rapping. So I'm out. I love them. There's no beef, but I'm out. I read, I heard that and said, so does that mean that when the group starts rapping, you're rapping too? <laughs> because that's what it sounds like. And if that's the case, then you didn't leave. And if that's the case, then what are we announcing? But he didn't, he didn't retire. <laughs> he said he left the group. No, he, he just left, left the group. Okay, he said, I'm no longer nice. in the group. He's not going to stop rapping. Okay, okay. All right. He's saying he's no longer in the group because the group is not rapping. Gotcha. But if the group raps again, he sounds like he wants to rap with the group. Which means you didn't retire. So it's confusing. So this announcement was just him saying. I don't know what the announcement is about. I'll be honest with you. But I, one day I'm going to call Crook and try to get to the bottom of it. I don't know what the announcement was about. I'm retired. <laughs> 
So it's like, <clears throat> if if the group wanted to rap, would you rap? This I, is. I think they all want to rap. They're all rapping. This is this is the problem, and this is my beef with Crooked's announcement. This is my beef with Joel and Royce responding to the Crook announcement with, "Yo, I support you, and yo, you my brother for life." This is my this is my problem. I think everybody involved, meaning all Slaughterhouse members and all Shady members, they all know how I feel. <laughs> I have been pretty vocal in how I feel regarding the group since 2010. So I know why I am not addressing all things Slaughterhouse related, because my perspective is my perspective. It might not be shared with the guys. I didn't talk to them about it, but they know my perspective. Which is what? Which is... At at thirty at almost thirty eight years old, and my time being my inventory, I cannot do anything where bad business is involved. Okay. Where I am in my career today, Parks, to answer your question is, slaughterhouse something that I created or co created would be the perfect conglomerate to release music right now, because I would have to go in and do a fourth of the work. Right. And we work fast. Yeah. So in this age of independence, want me to tell you how much money I think Slaughterhouse would make if we were able to put out three to four projects a year on Empire? I have a good idea. Me too. It's a different conversation. Right. If we actually got involved in the streaming game, if we never deviated from our brand. I've been saying this since 2010. I've been trying to rectify this since 2010. Unfortunately, some other people want to do nothing but rap. In retirement, you should clearly see Joe is about more than just rapping. I'm, I've passed that point in my career where I can just rap. I can't. We live in New York. You know how much it costs to live in New York? I do. It's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And and this is my other beef. My beef was never with my brothers, my, my slaughterhouse brothers, Crook, Joel, and Royce, because the four of us will always drop everything we're doing to go do a Slaughterhouse album. Yeah, I've seen it. We've done it. The album that we have that we can't release, that's what we did. That was a very pivotal time for all members. We was going through shit in our lives. Mm -hmm. We dropped everything to do that album. That album never came out. No one was affected but the artists, but us. <laughs> I had to go reroute everything. Right. So did Rory. So did Joel. So did Crook. And here we are all of these years later. None of the fans have been given a proper explanation as to why. <laughs> none of them. Let's talk about it. I have no, I'm, I base my entire career off being my version of honest. Right. So if we're ever going to have an honest slaughterhouse conversation, I'm down to have it. But until then, I won't talk about it because nothing I have to say is great. Want to make Slaughterhouse music? Get us off the label. <laughs> get me get the get the group off of Shady Records. We make music rather quickly. I bet you we'll have music. I bet you people will be incentivized to make music, and I bet you the morale will be rather high. Now that speaks nothing about Shady and their level of support or what they did for us. I'm just saying the difference in thinking between me and maybe some other people. I've always been super independent in my thinking. Right. I can't go do music for free and not be paid at my value. That's the other part about being in a group. It's four people. They busting that pie down. The pie is split four ways. So it's a passion project for all of us. Once it stops being fun... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to do? I hear you. You know what Royce is going to do? He's going to get with Preen and put out crack. He's going to get with whoever and put out some crack. Like Maul said, Joel is rapping still. And I hear he's engaged. Congratulations to Joel. I made the round of applause. I didn't know that. Oh, congrats. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, but I read that. So congratulations to Joel. And Crook, who can rap in his sleep. But that's part of the problem. Crook is such a dope rapper that he can rap in his sleep. Maybe the business part of it is not as important to him. I think he's a good businessman, but I think... <laughs> you have been there for all of the Slaughterhouse stuff, and I'll leave it there. <laughs> I mean, Kirk is an independent musician as well. Which is why I don't understand his beef with me. Because Crooked Eye 
is an independent guy like me. So tell me how another independent thinker has a problem with my independent thinking, especially when you are doing the exact same thing I'm doing. (laughs) Somebody would have to explain it to me. I I love Crook and I support his decision making. Uh, But you got to, I need, I need help with that one. (laughs) Got a I'm not all I'm not like everybody else is going to ignore the shit because nobody wants to talk about it but I still think this slaughterhouse is a fucking uh, seven figure creation I agree I just think we haven't gotten to it yet I mean Shady's got a free free glass house man free glass house no they don't no they don't keep I mean, I guess free the point. group keep glass house free the group put glass house out and recoup whatever money you have spent and let's, let's wash our hands Royce will still have his affiliations. Everybody else will be free to do what they, they want to do. And if the group wants to do an album, then we'll do it. Right. I bet you will want to. <laughs> I bet you will want to. Yeah, it changes things. I'm just mad that nobody has gotten an explanation. Everybody just keep beating around the bush. And y'all know I'm honest. Y'all know I'm honest. So y'all know I'm going to give it up. But I'm not giving it up right now because I'm not. Uh, but that's how I feel about that. Uh, Rest in peace, Slaughterhouse, man. <laughs> more. It's not rest in peace, Slaughterhouse. For now. It's not for now. <laughs> are, you, are you rest in peace for now? Rest in peace, Slaughterhouse. It's, not rest, it's not rest in peace, Slaughterhouse for now. For now. Slaughterhouse is great. Um, <laughs> and that's that. What else is really, really important? Let me look at my phone. Uh, good music, please. It's, uh, down, see the, oh, shit, the Waffle House shooting. You in the Waffle House. See, that could you could have been in there, Joe. <laughs> I'd have tackled money. Same way homeboy did. You fucking coming here shooting while I'm dead in the middle of grits and a waffle. <laughs> you getting the fuck out of here, homeboy. You got him. Uh, I hate to be that guy that says none of the national uh, media is covering how the unarmed black guy tackled the white guy with the AR-15 again, mm-hmm. firing at innocent people. Mm-hmm. But I won't. I won't. There's no point. Doesn't go with their yeah, narrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why you would want to shoot up a waffle house. Word. First of all, them niggas already look like they got the hammer in there. So <laughs> why would you go in there thinking that's the place to be? <laughs> oh shit, place to be. Since we're on, since I'm on my slaughterhouse rant, now hard I argued for slaughterhouse to not be paired with Pooh Bear to come up with place to be. Pooh Bear, what? Um, lost me. Pooh Bear is a writer. Oh, Pooh, Pooh Bear uh, writes hits. Okay. Pooh Bear wrote the record "Incredible Place to Be" that was on the Slaughterhouse album. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. <laughs> Come on, worry. Stop causing feedback. All right. Uh, on the TV, really quick before I get to sports. So Netflix is canceling Seven Seconds Forever. It's gone. It's done. They shot some dope shit in Jersey City. Got me all riled up, thinking they were paying attention to fucking social matters. And they said, "What was that?" My computer. Oh. Uh, and they got rid of it. No more seven seconds. I'm why, probably the why, only person why? sad about that. I'm no, I'm sad I, about it. I, I love that. Was it? I, I think everybody in the country watched that. I think that they ended it in a way that it would be weird for them to continue. But then someone said that they were going to just switch social issues. I, yeah, the I, th- same. I thought they'd go to a different city, just do something right as the same caliber, but not as a story that continues on. Well, that one season was a fucking doozy. I love that show. Yeah, and Shorty was great in it too. Yeah, yeah, I she thought she was gonna be like Yeah, the process or the, the lawyer girl <laughs> yeah, was great. Regina was great. Yeah. Uh, and that the show was great. I'm I'm a little disappointed. So gone but not forgotten. Uh shout out to uh all of them, seven seconds. <laughs> Even though fucking Netflix, man, I'm the nigga that be turning Netflix on like just to search for new shit. That's been a little difficult lately. They've been a little slow on the n- new uploads. Well, they had like a run of a million shows for like they were coming out with it. It was too much. But that's point. what I told you. I told y'all a couple months ago. I felt like that about Netflix. Like there's nothing on there. Like it's like. No, they, yeah, they're wilding now. They're a little slow with the uploads. But uh, they put out all these releases that said they're about to spend $90 billion in content. So I'm assuming they'll fix that soon. So I'm just going to keep refreshing. I'm pretty sure uh, Orange is the New Black will be back soon. That should be quiet for like. A, I don't care about that shit. Yeah, <laughs> Orange is the New Black. Is well, that's not one of their thing. bigger shows. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. So definitely. Um, uh, let's stay on TVs and movies really quickly. I saw the Venom trailer. Uh, it it, it is that the official trailer? Is the se- the seven well, second? Well, the that- Venom leak. 
Because you know that's what they do. They show you the first appearance of the villain. So they say, we got the first exclusive pictures of Venom. Like, we ain't seen Venom our whole lives. Um, so just that seven seconds that, is going just, around. No, there's a longer clip. That's not true. There's a longer clip oh, okay. than that. Um, oh, and I saw it, it and it, lo- it looks pretty good. It does. Yo, Marvel is keeping their foot in the gas, bro. They have to. Now, that's what I want to talk about next. Listen, Marvel, Marvel comic book junkie people. This is where you should exit. Listen, I have not seen Infinity Wars, but it's going to sound like I'm giving spoilers because I'm just going to guess some shit and tell some jokes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know anything that's going to happen in Infinity Wars. I'm not one of those Marvel junkies that uh, go on all the comic websites to see previews and spoilers, but I've read a few comic books in my day. Let me just, hold on, man. Hold on. I'm sorry. I fucked up. Let's get a moment of silence. Let me just put out the Kevin's Hart uh, uh, video. Uh, it's so hard. Here we go. Boys to men. How do I? Captain America. I you're fucking out of here, you and your shield. <laughs> Oh, I've been waiting for years to get you. And I hated your little fucking tough guy in the army story. I did. Now I can be honest now that Thanos is here. I I never thought you was tough, Captain America. I'm glad you're out of here. Cyclops. Oh, man. (laughs) You and your little trick glasses, buddy. (laughs) You're out of here. Rest in peace, Cyclops. <laughs> Who else is fucking Thanos going to kill and destroy? Hey, uh, hey Storm. Storm. Because you, you could type cool with Cyclops. Storm. <laughs> you and all your fucking weather magician shit. <laughs> you going to die, bitch. <laughs> Come on. Who else is going to? Oh, man. Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man. Wow. Wow. They're not, not gonna, yo, not gonna, gonna wha- happen, man. not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Y'all got Thanos. <laughs> fuck that. Yo, this is a great moment for you comic book fucking pussies. Not, <laughs> Shut the <laughs> fuck up, Maul. Iron happen. Man is out of here, nigga. Uh, you and your fucking fancy metal outfit, nigga. Huh? Your little yellow and red. Huh? Tony Stark's is good. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Hey. Incredible Hulk. <laughs> you and your muscles. You and your muscles. Six feet underground, Hulk. No way. Not a chance, bro. The Hulk ain't going nowhere. <laughs> y'all shut the fuck up, damn it. Bro, I didn't know y'all was such. Damn, I what y'all got then? Y'all bought the invisible capes? <laughs> Roy, can you see? Know, can you see their? About what y'all are talking about. Can you see? But uh, all right, great. Zero. Do you have eyes? Can you see their capes? Can you see their capes? <laughs> why? Why do you think? Why, you why, think are, y'all cape, why are you caping for niggas that I didn't even know you had a third relationship but with? Incredible my Incredible Hulk. What makes you think somebody's gonna kill the Incredible Hulk? Have you met Thanos? <laughs> have you seen, seen Thanos? Seen him here, have yeah. you read a comic book with <laughs> yeah. Thanos in it? All right, so let me let me let me so let me tell you who Thanos is. Listen, I ain't seen none of these little stupid previews. I ain't the little white kids waiting in line for three days. Yes, I'm cool. You are, by the way, <laughs> no, I'm not. I just I want to. I wish we could find that podcast because it was early. It was like year one. I don't know what movie came out. Man, we but I like said game six of a finals to go watch one of those damn movies. In you our year, in year one of our podcast, I said my beef with all this comic book shit is where's the bad guy that comes to kill everybody? Because I know about Galactus. I know about Thanos. I know about Loki or Lokai or however you say his fucking name. Like some niggas wasn't for play play. Doctor Doom. There was a bunch of Magneto. Some of these they won sometimes. You are the white kid in the line. You're they just, they they won. You're outing yourself when you right was now. old. You're just not in costume. <laughs> when you was oh, yo, man, and you have a cape on. Hey, Doctor Doom used to beat the shit out of the Fantastic Four. I don't see it in the movie. <laughs> I don't see it in the movie. That's all I'm saying. So here we are. <laughs> Thanos. Yeah. Thanos is the one. Yes. They gonna beat the dog shit out of Thanos. Yeah. Word. And this week? Yes. Maul, yo, you listen. <laughs> the Incredible, you think the Incredible Hulk is gonna get killed? I don't think he's that incredible. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't think he's that incredible next to Thanos. Do you know Thanos is a god? Like, so was the last one that they just the, the last dude. Nah, see, god. that's my beef with the comic books. They just be making up villains and it don't be the nigga from back in the day that was getting busy. It's some new nigga. Oh my shit, the plant god is here. Like somebody trash. The plant god. <laughs> yeah. The plant god. Wow. yeah, somebody that they could fuck up. Nah, nigga. Thanos, Infinity Gauntlet, Five Stones, Iron Man, you're out of here, buddy. Yo, Sorry, I don't make the rules. Wait a minute. How y'all think he gonna want smoke with Thanos? Bizarro Iron Man almost killed Iron Man in the last Iron Man when he painted the suit black and beat the shit out of Iron Man. Man, get the fuck out of here. Almost doesn't count, man. Can someone count how many gunshots? Savon, can I get a paper towel, please? You just said gauntlet very aggressively. Let me take off my motherfucking <laughs> vest hoodie. The cape? The cape. Take off my vest hoodie so niggas know I'm blessed as fuck. <laughs> That's Ronnie shit, right? <laughs> yeah, Rory hates me. Rory and Maul hate me. But they can't stop talking to me because our podcast is fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should be the description yeah. of the podcast. Yeah, these niggas hate. These co-hosts hate each other. They hate but my people guts. seem to like it, so they continue to talk to each Yo, other. Yo, I, I was thinking about it. I said, I'm going to come in here and really give Maul and Rory the smoke on cam if they want the smoke. Like, I got to find out what's wrong on, with these On the niggas. cam? Uh, on the cam, I'm a old. I'm so trash. On the cam, <laughs> <laughs> the documented smoke. <laughs> All right, wait. There's some more funny shit happening. Wait, 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 wait. All right, up. Oh, All right, before we get to the funny shit, um, and I'm only bringing this up because this has been like a real, this has been a, like a a real topic with me and people I've been speaking to in the streets uh, over the past two weeks. Like some women have really been coming at me saying why all the media voices like myself, Charlemagne, Ebro, whoever the fuck they name, have been ra rather quiet when it comes to the fab situation. Which the two of them were at Coachella together. That is why me, Charlemagne, <laughs> and some of the other media people are rather quiet when it comes to the fab situation. Wait, who was at Coachella together? Fab and Emily. Okay. Allegedly. No, from, not from a, from a no, video. No, 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 it was there. Of the two of them. It was in the video. They was there. I seen it. I synced it. <laughs> I synced that shit. They was there. So now that's cool. I commend Fab and Emily for getting together and working out their family and their marital issues. Yeah, good for them. My thing is, <laughs> this is the time where all of the women are supposed to come and apologize. Wait, why? Apologize to who? Because what do women, I don't, women have to say something when a woman stays with a man. I don't think they have to apologize. Not apologize. You know what I'm talking about. Not really apologize. Come on. I wouldn't oh. say that. No, no. No, I that's that. what you said. No, no. That's I take it back. All right, say nigga. Don't say it again. Uh, Try to get me in trouble. Okay. My bad. I was saying it wrong. Let me rephrase. That no, was I wrong. Just, I was just checking. I'm not apologize. Just talking loosely. Not apologize. But they have to They have to. Say they have something. to say something, no, right? Yeah. I they, have, they have to assist this one? Like, what is you doing, sis? Do they wait? Wait. Who do they? Who do they speak to, though? Do they speak Emily. to Emily? No, 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 no. Leave Emily alone. Who do they? Emily's speak to? Emily's been through whatever enough. Emily Fab, leave him alone. I don't know. Mm. I'm just saying, it feels awkward when the guys are quiet and the women are quiet. <laughs> I feel Listen. like somebody's got to say something. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, know. I understand what you're saying, but it's eh. all right. I'm who do you? Up. Who do you say something to, though? I don't know. I don't know. I'm um, happy they got this shit together, though. Um, all right, what else happened that is really important? Oh, all right, really quickly. Maybe not really quickly, but this is where I hand in my hipster card. And I don't think I have a hipster card. But Rory and Maul and Parks think I have a hipster card, so I'm trying to hand it in. I see you at the meetings. Oh, yeah? Mm. Well, here we are. This is the moment of truth right here, Rory. <laughs> I want you guys to enlighten me on... Georgia Smith. She's attractive. And that is my issue. <laughs> that's, that's actually oh, really I, I see the hipster movement. That's, that's the opposite of my issue. Well, in every hold up, hold up. Hey, everybody right. relax. I see the hipster movement taking place and attempting to make me like Georgia Smith. She might be telling. What's, what's not she to might, like? 
I don't know. That's why I said to enlighten. I've only heard like two records. That bro. and that is why I said enlighten me on Georgia Smith because when I went to do research on Georgia Smith and why everybody liked Georgia Smith so much, I didn't see so many records. She mm-hmm. doesn't have a lot, but the one. So she then does why have is so? So what is the record that has all of these people on Georgia Smith? And I'm not saying that to hate. I want to do my research, but I'm not seeing it. I see that she's really attractive. Which has me thinking that y'all niggas are just bigging shit up because chicks are really attractive. Is that a hipster thing? I think that's a man thing. No, that's a hipster thing. (laughs) That's a hipster thing. Men men just want to fuck the attractive chick. They don't really want to big her up every day. (laughs) 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 So that's not a man thing. But all right, I'm just saying, if there is one of those songs, then I want you to tell me so I can go look for it. I played Blue Lights on this podcast a a while ago. Uh, She was on Drake's album twice. Oh, that's... That, oh, that, she was. Got it, got it. All she right. had an interlude. I got it. Now. Uh, that's what. Oh, the Georgia interlude. She's been. Oh, uh, that, now these now hipsters, it's all coming man. together. These hipsters. <laughs> more, yeah, it was the Drake more. stamp. It was the Drake stamp. Come on. Sure. That's I it. Think Drake po- posted she's a picture also, of her one day on his Joe, she's also bigger over. Like, she's from overseas. Okay, got it, got it. So it's just getting to America now. All right, so we, we hold up then. We hold off. We yeah. hold off. But but no, I, she's, I, she's talented. I want, she is. I mean, she sounded like she could sing. I yeah. just thought there was a song, kind of maybe like Alessia Carr's uh, no, uh, no, Here, no, no, no. who had everybody. She, um, and I think she premiered something on Insecure as well, like in the credits. <laughs> she's using the right outlets in America to get there. Drake, Insecure. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask Maul and Rory if they were going to go out and purchase the new Puma Lenciagas. <laughs> pre ordered mine already. Now, let me just say before you guys answer, Kanye posted that meme where he accused Nike of biting off of his little Adidas style, whatever sneaker that is, 450, 420. I don't keep up. Now I saw Puma putting out a sneaker that looks exactly like that. I see a few sneakers coming out looking exactly like that. Would you wear the Puma Balenciaga? No. <laughs> Would you real the wear the the real Balenciaga sneaker? No. Would I'm you not wear a fan of designer sneakers? Would you would you wear the uh, Puma Balenciaga? No. But a Puma's not designer. I'm wearing Pumas. No, I but I, Puma. I don't like I'm a when Puma head. I don't like when like high end fashion like Louis and Gucci. I don't like when they. I never liked the Louis shoes. Yeah, I don't do. I never oh, liked Gucci yeah, shoes. Yeah, those are ugly. I would you know, not wear those. I, I saw my first pair of off white. Uh, collabs that I like. What's the the Prestos? Yeah, they have the Prestos. Like. Mm. They got a, they got some shit. I wasn't mad at the ninety sevens either. Where do people go to purchase off off white collabs? I never, I never knew where people go to purchase. Oh, I'm not cool enough things. to know, and I'm never buying a raffle Online. ticket to get sneakers. <laughs> yeah. you, all you niggas is losers, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, you're a loser for getting raffle tickets to buy sneakers. Hey, to <laughs> burst to burst everyone's those. bubble, those raffles are fixed. The wait, friends win the raffle. Wait, you know what's funny, Johnny? Know how much of a loser you are? You be winning the raffles, <laughs> like you actually get the sneakers. <laughs> That's how you know it's you are. Way to get them, fucking bum. Anyway, uh. <laughs> All right, so I'll keep a lookout for that. Uh, I said it wasn't much to talk about this nah. week, and we're right around. I think we covered everything. Wait, I do want to ask. Oh, wait a minute. Hey. So Ghost on Twitter, uh, who I followed after I was going to uh, fight him a few years ago. I was flying to Atlanta to fight Ghost. <laughs> Wait, wait. This is, I need that backstory before he was going on a Twitter. He, he, he was on a Twitter rant to somebody, and this was back when Twitter was Twitter, 2011, 12, Good old 10. So yeah, the fun time, oh, the golden years. And this is when I was just telling niggas that they can't fight. Like if niggas were dissing me, I'm like you can't fight, nigga. I beat you up. So I said that to him. He responded, and I was in the tweet anyway, uh, purchasing a flight to Atlanta to link up with him and fight him. I just have a question. When you buy a flight to fight somebody, do you like look for a good rate or are you just book in the first one you see? You want a good rate. You want you, a good rate. Yeah, too. you don't want to pay a lot. But what if you fly you need leg room just in case? Fight you fight get wa- washed. And, yeah, he park you. Well, that's why <laughs> That's why I didn't fly out there. Okay. Because it's probably not smart to fight somebody, a stranger on their territory. Anyway. Yeah, that's when they have time in, to prep. Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you better go and make sure you prepare in 36 hours because I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not really the move. But anyway, so his name popped up in the news recently because he borrowed $75 from a girl, a young lady, and didn't return it, and she was angry about it. So she exposed some private text messages between the two of them. Over $75? Yeah. So let me just, let me just, <laughs> yeah, so let me just say, ladies ladies and gentlemen out there, uh, you should not lend money that you need back. 
You shouldn't lend it. That should be your rule of thumb. Yeah. Don't lend it if you can't afford to lend it. Let me say Listen, that. Listen, man, you now, can't air somebody out over seventy five dollars. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous. That's yeah, crazy. but wait, but that's not even the 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 point because. I mean, we've all been there. We've, we've, we've all been there before. I have all borrowed $75. <laughs> <laughs> I've from, never from had a, anybody From a out. girl with no interest in paying her back? Yeah, yeah I've I've probably have. Somebody out of <laughs> I've probably done that. <laughs> so I wasn't really interested in that story outside of him and I uh, are almost fight a few years ago. But I read it and I just ignored it. But then the lady kept putting out more texts. So I read them. And then that's when my mentions started and I, blowing up. And I up. saved I saved the text because it was too juicy. I thought she might delete it. <laughs> so I'm here to read you the text to see if... Are y'all familiar with the story? No. Good, I, good. I, good. I, I'm so glad. Oh, no. I, good. I, I Rory, please, 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 please. I'm the I A mic. I want to I I put my A mic shit in effect. I want to mute Rory's mic <laughs> until the appropriate time. Got you. Rory, I'm not Rory. Uh, Parks and Maul, I want to read y'all this slew of texts and see if y'all can figure out the point that I became interested. Okay. Here we go. If Rory names pops up in this, this is going to be the greatest story ever. That's all I'm it doesn't, but it does. The young lady says, hey, where's my $75? <laughs> Yo. Getting right to the point. Yo, I hate when girls text you and get right to the point. Like, you got to slow walk the dog in my text. That means they're ready to Don't let me look you. down at my phone and see the exact reason why you're texting me immediately. Say good morning, how I'm doing or something. She said, hey, where's my $75, man? <laughs> and Ghost, whose name is Sean, and I'm only saying that because it's here. He said, it'll be in your PayPal tomorrow. Question to you guys. Doesn't that sound like it ends it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question I'm, to you guys. I'm cool. Does it sound does that sound like it ends it if you're talking to an emotional woman? No. Not at all. So you guys let me keep going. <laughs> she says, because you've hit me every morning since I've been here. Early in the morning, today you didn't, and I really don't want to hear no other excuse. Cause if you don't have your car yet, you still have my seventy five. And honestly, you can send that back. I said before I leave. Mm -hmm. He said, Yeah, before you leave. <laughs> right Me and she's not leaving yet No I'll get it to you Before you leave I'll get it to you like, Get off my phone <laughs> why, why are you still on my phone Yo And I'm reading it this way Because Men and women Really have a hard time Understanding each other mm -hmm. And since I'm a man I'm fighting for the men On this one uh, <laughs> She says I leave at 6am <laughs> I thought I thought she had him there mm -hmm. He said If I had your $75 right now I would have just sent it to you if I had it, uh, if I had it since Friday, I would have just sent it to you. Don't know if you just want to argue with me or if you're accusing me of lying. But either way, it's unnecessary, and the money should clear at around three a.m. The seventy-five. <laughs> the, the bank has to check that one out. I want y'all to understand that we talking about seventy-five. We talking about three dubs. I never, this conversation is already too long. We talking about three dubs and some change. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to make sure it's three dubs and some change, a ten I'm, and a five. Ten ten listen, five. Once there's a the five seventy-five goal? will clear. Is crazy. Yeah, actually, you should just give them the eighty. Yeah, <laughs> send the four dubs and get it over with. Like, but more, don't do that. Because, why? Because and and Sin asked me this too. Some people do not have seventy-five dollars, and you can't sound like to spare, to spare, to spare, to spare. It's tough out there. It's tough I, out no, there. No, no, I, no, okay, okay. No, no. It's I, tough out I there. I get that. I, I'm with you. I bought it I'm for a reason. You. Yes. I'm, yes, come on, more. No, his, come his, on, more. I'm mad at his dialogue. <laughs> no, nah, I thought he was body in the it dialogue. It clear? Yeah, yeah. You it'll, can't ever tell me $75 is going to clear. I'm not having a dialogue over $75. Yeah, like, like hey, I'm going to say dialogue. Bank of America called me, asked me what it was for. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. $75. That's what I'm saying. I got a notification of my text. Did you, did, you, did you authorize this sale? Yeah, send the fucking 75 through, man. Hey, yo, $75 should be clear in the next five minutes. Right? Yeah, like, like, I don't even know what you mean. They don't need hours to verify your 75 bones. Oh, Ghost, you're great, man. Uh, all right, so let me, uh, let me, let me finish because there's more. I didn't even get to the good part. Oh, oh yeah, no, that's the setup. All oh, right. Um, this is crazy. All right. Oh, he says, and yes, I have my car. He gave her. A, he called her a bitch in his head after that one. He didn't write that, but he said, 
And she said, Listen. <laughs> oh, yo, when bitches start with listen, you're in trouble, my nigga. First of all, listen I, to I, a I text think, is I crazy. Listen, <laughs> listen to a text is crazy. I'm the king of that. I, I'm Word. the king of listen to the text. <laughs> yeah, that lets you know I mean business. She says, Listen. Oh, wait, before I read this, I hate when people do this too. Like, if I owe you money, don't count my money I'm spending, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, you 100% can count the money. Nah, somebody. but don't do that. If somebody owe you money yeah. and you see them out there having yeah. fun. Nah, Damn, nah. I need my 75 yeah. of that fun. Nah, though. my friends got me on the fun, nah, my nigga. Well, your friends better have you on my 75. <laughs> nah, my friends don't care about your 75. <laughs> she says, Listen, you bought a Duce Palooza ticket. Mm. <laughs> You've hung out, chilled with your people. Mm -hmm. Cool. I sent the 75 because I asked you to pick me up from the airport, which you clearly couldn't do. So I took a cab. I don't care about anything else. Bar it. I want my money by midnight. Mm. Mm. Let me hit the gunshot, man. Let me mm. turn it down a little bit for the people at work. Mm. I want my money by midnight, ghost. A Ace Boogie paid. I don't four. give a fuck if you got to get it from Tommy. Huh? I want my $75 on Monday. Mm. All right. Ghost says... Oh, uh, yeah, my God. Hey, at Dos Rivers bought me a ticket. <laughs> at Chef Waits got me a VIP band. Midnight, question mark. <laughs> Are you giving me an ultimatum about $75? <laughs> <laughs> That's Seriously? What it sounds like. Question mark. I ain't gonna lie, I like Ghost's temperament, man. Ghost handled himself like a real mature adult in this nah, in this in this she wild be, time. Is she fine? Well, wait, because I have more questions. Let me just finish okay. reading, and then okay. we'll, we'll assess it together like a family. Right, cool. um, <laughs> then she said, you told me I would have it by Friday. You've danced around it, my nigga. The principle is you didn't keep your word. So now, when chicks use shit like the principle, you beat. You fuck. You it's fuck so this chick, Ghost. Because she's talking about the principle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. He said, all right, I'm done. Did I get my car booted? You sent me money to get the boot off. The other money you sent me was for your weed. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I want to add another curveball. Into yes, this. ghost. Talk your shit, ghost. This woman is married. Wow. Oh, sh wait. Shit. What? Yes. Wait. No, 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 no. This no. isn't like, no. She oh, said wait. this on the timeline. Well, pause this. Pause this. Because I want to come back to this. So okay. let me finish reading Just this. Keep and that I want to get into you. No. Where can you get a boot off your car for $75? Where can That's you get a married to woman to send you $75? Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> they Damn, in, I got to move to Atlanta. Atlanta. Man, me too. That's crazy. I don't yeah. even have a car. All right. Uh, let me see. This says, uh, I didn't. She said, it's my money. I don't care if it was $2. LOL. IDC. LOL. <laughs> back to back LOLs. You're, you're lying. You're not LOL. He says, I didn't expect to get my car booted in the middle of the work week, Tawana, and I didn't know how much my check was going to be. Relax. She says, that's fine. I don't care. I only care about my $75. So that's caring, uh, Tawana. Uh, she said, hit me once you send it. He said, I literally don't have any money, but I'm hustling to get more right now. You'll get the notification. No need to hit you. You obviously don't give a fuck about anything else besides me paying you back good try there ghost uh, i've tried that trick back in the day when you get them to act like they only care about one thing that's pretty materialistic and shallow and not about your needs while you're in a time of desperation hey clap it up for ghost on that one <laughs> that's an og move yeah yeah, yourself vulnerable. yeah 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 you got to do that especially yeah. when they beefing about something yeah uh, i'm not mad at that uh Oh, Kaiser. This is over $75. This is Kaiser. great. Let's see what Kaiser She said that you do the same over $2. Yeah. If you PayPal someone $2. This shit is great, man. What? I mean, I'm on part two. This is, this is great, man. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, real nigga shit on there, man. This is great, man. I know these kids are not going to watch it and understand it. But let me tell you something. For me, mm, mm, mm. I mean, it's that spot, bro. No, th man. thank you, guys. I appreciate that. I call you. I call you later, so we kick it. My man. Okay. One. Um. What was we talking about? Bad industry. Uh. What was we talking about? Just now. Uh, Shut up, Rory. <laughs> we stopped a great story. The okay. Story okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, guys. Like, he called. Uh. Let me see. Let me see. Where's we have? That's fine. I don't care. I'm sending. He said. Oh, he said. I live. Um. Oh, I said that. You'll get the notification. Oh, she says you were at Duce Palooza partying yesterday, telling me you don't have it today. You're right. I don't. Thanks. 
Listen, in Ghost Defense, the Duce is free at Duce Palooza. There you go. <laughs> I don't like a chick just clocking my all my moves while I'm at Duce trying to lounge. <laughs> <laughs> trying to lounge. <laughs> yeah, like I'm at Duce trying to get the pressures of the world off me, and here they are also in Duce Palooza. Right. You about to ruin my fucking great time here with my friends and trying to bag these fine Atlanta bitches over seventy five dollars, ma? Mm-hmm. Wait, so let me she finish. gotta be fine. So he says, Why'd you say that? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Eating eating some fun ha- eating some have fun eating some. I don't know what that means. He said, Man, fuck that. I'm not eating any more of that shit. What's it? Oh, they're showing oh, she showed an old, old tweet. This is old. LOL, did the money clear yet? He says, I'll check. Sorry, I've been in a daze playing FIFA with dose. He gives a lot of information to people. That's a lot. She asked, did the money clear? You telling her you playing FIFA with your friend. With dose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dose don't even sound like he's encouraging you to pay her back. And gave, and gave everyone's Twitter names before. I thought yeah, that was, yeah, I that was a, a little Twitter odd name too, and a text. Yeah, How weird. old is this nigga? She says, okay, and then this is the classy, this is the most classicest of them all, this move right here. Let's hear it. He then sent a picture of his empty bank account. Swag. Mm. $2.89. <laughs> It's $2.89. Mm. Rory's seen this, so I'm I won't fam- show him. I'm familiar. Hey, Ghost, let me hit the round of applause. Really low for you one time. For the $2? All niggas got that spare empty bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. The 289 Everybody got that bank account that's got 289 in it. <laughs> yeah. From that old bank that don't even exist. Yeah. Fam, you got to keep it there. The bank that lets you pay on an underdraft. (laughs) Like when the money's not really there. Yeah, we got it, Ghost. Slick move there. So I want to dab him for that. Now, to Rory's point. No, I didn't know that this chick was married, Rory. You're telling me this girl's married? She revealed that information on the timeline. So a married woman is sending a man money. The story is gotten deeper. and, and And what she was saying, she is just friends with this gentleman and you can't send your friend money. Nah. They didn't sound like friends. That doesn't sound friendly. And I don't care if it's a man or a woman. Man. If you're married, you probably have a joint account. Don't fucking send somebody $75 to get their boot off their car. Yeah, no. <laughs> don't send no man. Yo, no let's money. talk about this. Hold up, hold up. Let's get into it. This is where these Twitter niggas get weird. She's married, right? And she sent a nigga from Twitter $75. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. What am I doing if I'm her husband? Stealing seventy five dollars out of her. I'm place. having. I had an issue with that. If I'm her husband, number one, number two. Anybody read her bio? No, I didn't. Read it. <laughs> no, it's <a> personal chef. <laughs> oh my god! So that left me even more confused as to why a chick that has personal chef in her bio would be behaving this way. Who the fuck is hiring you to cook? <laughs> You're spilling all the business over seventy five bones. Word. Four dubs. Chef John would never. So I'm one never. Or Chef Corey. <laughs> even, none of them. Even through their none breakup. None of them. Yo, he would, <laughs> he's been quiet. No, no, no. He cares about me post breakup. So I have to ask Rory, what's going on over there at Duce Palooza, man? Listen, man. I didn't know that this is what you guys were funneling. It then hit the group chat, and I know Chef Waits. He lives in Atlanta. He's a good guy. My group chat directed all the energy to me and said, well, you're in charge of the bands. How the fuck did Chef Waits get VIP bands? Nah, that's true. <laughs> I never looked at it like that. I then said, <laughs> I only had backstage bands. Duke had all the VIP ones that's in the front. So, Duke, R- so Rory snitched. Duke runs with all the Twitter guys. True. Mm. He did. He snitched. Oh, of course I snitched. <laughs> I'm not getting brought into this. Way to stand up. Way to stand up for your snitch. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm not getting involved in this mess. I don't know who Ghost Rider is or who that chick is. I'm not mad at you, my G. Yeah. Yeah, you have no loyalty to either one of them. None. Tell them all. I'm with you. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Does this does this leave a stain at, at Duce Palooza? Nah. <laughs> or does this just make us hotter in the streets? Nah, you're hot out there. And and and, and, and Ghost is hot out there. That's that's hard when you avoid a chick you owe money to the whole night. I ain't clapping up for the nigga Ghost, man. Yo, $75 is crazy. I'm not I'm answering sorry. those texts. <laughs> Yo. And I'm not paying her seventy five dollars just because you annoying about it. Yeah. If you would just leave me alone, I'd have gave it to you because because the money cleared. Seventy five dollars, <laughs> Claren is crazy. But more, you is don't it, remember two, the two time where you days? didn't where you didn't have uh, passive income. 
<laughs> yeah, but I'm not saying it didn't Wait, clear. I just said seventy five dollars is passive income. <laughs> seventy five right, is that right, income? I'm out of here. It man. didn't clear. Uh, that's when does seventy five dollars clear? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm offering to pick a chick up at the airport if I have $2.89 in my account, though. Fam, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. There's too much shit going on in this story, man. I don't know if I'm doing that. He got me with that one. She's got to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see? I didn't want to, you know, everyone has their I wanna preference. I want to see this woman. She wasn't the cutest. She was all right. Okay. Well, maybe that's fine to him. Man, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And <laughs> Some people or don't have eyes. The, the beholder of the PayPal account. Yeah. <laughs> you seen her? You looking her up? No, what's her name? Oh, I'll definitely find her on IG. I definitely oh. Tawana or some shit. <laughs> Tawana. I don't think her at name is Tawana. You know niggas gotta put an underscore in the at name. So you're not gonna tell me who it is? What's her name? Wait, what's her name? No, I'm saying I don't, I don't no know. Oh, y'all don't know her. I didn't I didn't Twitter. know. I don't know, I don't know her Twitter who? name. Oh. She wasn't I somebody I, I, I follow ghosts. And let me just say he did a great job uh on his timeline, just under pressure that way. <laughs> He even changed. Really well. He changed something in his bio to mention oh and seventy five dollars. There have been some classic. <laughs> oh wait, time out, time out. Wait, I'm sorry. Then another chick came out and attacked Ghost. He owed another seventy five. Said that said that she <laughs> went on a date. Happens. Said that she went on a date with Ghost. And he left his. He forgot his wallet. At the end of the date, he said, "Hey, forgot my wallet at home." Swag. Yo, Ghost. <laughs> can, can, can can you do me a favor? <laughs> Go ahead and pay for both of these meals. Swag. Young lady said that she had the check come. She paid for her meal. She got the fuck out of there on Ghost. <laughs> left left them there. Oh, told the waiter that, hey, this gentleman needs to pay for his items. His wow. items. <laughs> then, Damn. Yeah, once you got to pull out words like items Word. that the check arriving. My side of mash is not an what item. What happens when that yeah, happens? You got to like, do dishes? I try to avoid those people. The people that want to itemize the do check. Dishes. When they call you jail. Like, Nigga, this ain't 1988. You're going to jail Over if you can Over $40? Can't. Yes. I didn't sign a contract. I just Word. said, yo, let me, let me get some of that shit you Okay. Got. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> well, it might be different for y'all too, gentlemen. But they're going to lock my black ass <laughs> up. I know that for that's sure. True. But that's exactly why I won't, go to, owns du- the restaurant. Why I won't go to Duce Palooza, though. Because if it's niggas dead without $75, I'm not going. <laughs> that's yeah, me. I don't want to party with I'm niggas not partying that's with waiting for the 75 that, to clear. Yeah. Well, well then, then it brings me back to how many people have lied to Fat Man Scoop saying how much money they had in their pocket. Oh, the big people, 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 people have always lied. People always lied to Fat Man. Who's fucking tonight? Who's fucking? I used to always raise my hand when I wasn't. And you fucking look tonight. around at the chicks that were screaming. I was never fucking the night that Fat Man Scoop never. asked. Never. never. I, don't I was think a I'm virgin. Ever <laughs> that Fat Man Scoop asked if I was fucking that night. I was nowhere near pussy when he asked this. Yeah, shit. definitely not. Um, okay, we, uh, I don't think there's much else to cover, honestly. Oh, wait, I want to talk to Maul about sports really quick. What's that? Talk to me about Car- Carmelo. Come on, give Washed. it to me. Give it to, uh, let's have an honest, we've had a great honest podcast so far, he's and not, I want to commend you guys. Nick, he's not a Nick anymore, so you can be unbiased now. No, listen to me, Maul. At the end of his Nick's tenure, I said he has to go, because I started watching him, and when he's disengaged, he's disengaged, he's really no no good when he's disengaged and that kind of is the same thing that I'm seeing now in OKC if he's not getting touches he's not with the shits and if he's not with the shits and knocking down open threes there's no point in having him out there he's not going to cut he's not setting a hard pick he's not grabbing a rebound he's not doing anything else to help your team win when he's not scoring that's the problem with him and as the third option he definitely don't look invested over there if but, all of them was invested they should be able to beat a rookie Donovan Mitchell Yeah, but here's the thing though with Utah they move the ball so much Melo's not closing out more than once. So if he has to close out twice in a possession on a shooter, you can forget about it. You're going to get open shot. Then, then bring him off the bench. You can't bring Melo he off won't. the bench. He won't. See, people you always say him. that. Right. You're, you're paying him too much money. That's the NBA. If you're paying a guy all of this money, he cannot come off your bench. It's one year, and I'm trying to get as deep as I can in the playoffs. Yeah, but you bring him off the bench. And, and, and he's a rental. And if you bring him off the bench, it's still the same issue, though. I don't know that. Then he could be a volume shooter on my second unit. He's disengaged because he's not even, getting touches. But he's not even shooting the ball well. That's Well, maybe that changes if he's the focal point in the second. All I'm saying is that what's that coach over there, Billy Donovan, who should not coach in the NBA anymore? He's trash. He has to go. Him and his one more. How many coaches got to get fired under uh, uh, Westbrook tenure? That's a good question. Mm. 
I can't. Put, I'm I not can, gonna put it on Westbrook though. Yeah, I can't put it on Russ. He plays. I think he Russ plays is hard great. Night, so it's, well, I think it's difficult to coach a team around a guy that just needs the ball in his hand for the entire team, the entire game. I just want to say, as as a Knicks fan, watching that, watching Donovan Mitchell is really hurting my soul. Boy, he's out. It's hurting my soul. And Frank Nikola 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 could end up being all right, but boy, ne- he's not gonna end up being a Donovan Mitchell though. I'm never, but he might end up being all right. Yeah, I mean, he, he I want to see what the Knicks do with this draft pick, honestly, because uh, say that Dolan is talking about no, really, really this time though is going to tell me a lot about their <laughs> thinking because Dolan is saying KP not might not play all next season. Yes, yeah, so Maul told me last season that KP's not resigning after his rookie contract. His brother is representing him now, and he's echoing the Maul sentiments. So I need to see if the draft pick says they're looking for a piece to slide alongside KP or a piece to replace KP. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't yeah. think the, the Knicks will have a pick in this draft that's going to replace a player like Paul. Oh yeah, because they're going to pick around some eighth or ninth or some yeah. shit with the new so, draft rules. Yeah, so they're not going to get a player like that. But I mean, I you know, deep draft though. It is a deep at another draft. point. I want you to tell me your thoughts on the European kid, Luca. Have you researched him? He's the real deal. He looks like the real deal. Yeah, he's the real deal. He he'll, looks. He'll like probably the, he looks, be a top four pick. He, they say number one. I don't know if he'll go number one. All right, so Donovan Mitchell is killing the big three. They're going to win that series, not next game, but the game after in Utah, I think right? They're gonna, I think they're going to win the next game. Yeah. Close it out. A so. little disappointed in Minnesota showing against uh, against Houston. I thought they would put up a more valiant fight than that. I'll be honest, I did. Houston, they're is talented. High, man. They're talented. Third quarter, that was. I mean, you score fifty points in a quarter, you, you're most likely going to win the game. Golden State is cheating again. Why you say that? They are. They are. They are. They're cheating. Why do you say that, though? I don't think there's any scenario where a, a Kawhi-less Spurs just beats that team. Yeah, no. So when they beat them in game three or four? Three. three. They just beat them game, f- four. game four. Four. That's four. Four. Yeah. Oh, that's four. See, that's my point. Golden State won three games. I heard Stephen A. say something like this, but I agreed uh, before I heard him say that. They won three, and then the Spurs won one. Mm-hmm. I'm in a pool, so I have the all of my picks for every single game. So mm-hmm. I kind of called that one like that. I just didn't see it going that way. I think they're buying time for Steph to get back because them Pelican boys don't look like the, the sweet niggas they were a couple years ago when uh, Steph hit that corner three to close out the series. That's mm-hmm. what I think. Mm-hmm. Them niggas look a little for real. Drew Holiday don't don't look like don't look so 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 slumpish. Nah, he's, but he, they, look, he I, looks on fire. Rondo totally. looks like playoff Rondo, and Anthony Davis is arguably the second or uh, first or third best player in the league. Wherever you want to slot him, yeah. that's why. No, I, I I get it, but I don't because they, I don't even think they have plans on even bringing Steph back until until it's like late in the second round. All right, so they Stop. can't don't buy say but much time. All right, so great. Don't say nothing. Do you so do you think that uh, Curryless Warriors can beat? The Pelicans. Yes. yes. I think so. Yeah. yeah, me too. I don't think it'd be easy. I think, and I think I that's think the problem. Six. I picked the Blazers to beat the Pelicans too. No I didn't way. think they would get swept like that. I didn't think they were going to get swept, but I don't believe in Dame, Dame Lillard. I'm I'm big on saying Wait. That. No, I don't believe in Postseason, I don't believe in Dame Lillard. He can he, ball though. Did, yeah, you, did, you watch no, him play? Play. did you watch him play Houston a few years ago? Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I still don't believe Luke. in Luke. Not that it was a fluke. It's just not enough for me to be like, he's going to beat. Travis Best with SoundCloud. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to say all that. You but, better not. I love yeah, you, Dame. Friend yeah, of the no, show, he, Dame. He, he can, Dame can hoop, but it, I don't postseason. And he got to show me and, something. And CJ can hoop too, but yeah. an undersized, oh, yeah. undersized backcourt. That, but it's postseason. Do you got to blow it up, Portland? Yeah. And yeah. I would, I would trade Dame Lillard before yeah. I trade CJ because I don't need a point guard. To the Knicks that wants to average for, thirty for um for Zegas. No, anybody else. Tim Hardaway. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that'll I'm go, sure they'll that'll go that. right through. <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll clear, clear. <laughs> like the 75. Um, okay, so here we are. R- who, wait, wait, wait. Who do you have coming out the East? Sixers looking all right, man. Um, I got the Sixers. Y'all think Cleveland can out the first round? Uh, yes. Yeah. They, think, Indiana blew it. I don't think they, so. They, they had to win game four. I think I might agree with Joe. I, I thought they was going to do it, but I that think, momentum. I think Cleveland's going home, man. Wow, <laughs> they are eventually going home, but no first round. I don't think they get out. They get out of the first round. They might still come out of the East. No, no they way. got they, they got the Raptors Philly. next. Nobody's beating Philly. Do they have the Raptors or Philly next? They would have. They would have the Raptors. Raptors yep. Wizards. Because well, Wizards look like they're gonna win that series. So. I don't think the Cavs can beat the Raptors either. Mm. They can beat the Wizards. No, I think the Cavs can beat the Raptors. I think they could too. Mm. They can't beat Philly. I got Philly that. is coming out of the East. That's my pick coming out the East. Me too. 
Yeah. Man, you just stole our pick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear your pick. You just asked us our pick, and we said it. We said we got Philly. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. Um, Trust the process. The NFL draft is Thursday. I know a lot of people don't care about that. Maul is boycotting the draft, so let me just say this to Parks really quickly because I've changed my my stance on the Giants pick a lot. This is this is my change now. Before I was saying the Giants shouldn't take Saquon Barkley because you'll have to pay him top running back money immediately and on the resign. However, character. So if they take him number two, then they're going to pay him that type of money because of his character. His character and his talent warrants him getting that type of money. The same way I think Odell would not be having these contract problems if his character mirrored Saquon's character. Yeah, they, they would have paid him already. Kid. They're gonna take that kid. They would have paid him already. I think that any team should take Saquon Barkley. He's the best player in the draft, and you're crazy if you don't pick him. But I understand people not wanting to take a running back and have him be paid that high on a rookie contract. That's I understand true. that. I get it. I get it. That that's the, that's where that's where my argument stops against Saquon Barkley. I'm not mad at him or Bradley Chubb or Sam Darnold. Those are my three picks. I do feel like Saquon is going to end up on a giant somehow. And then I, I definitely foresee a locker room struggle between him and Odell. His character just seems too on the straight and narrow and he's not with the shits. And if they're going to build around him, then I see a Odell Saquon beef at some point in the future. So there, I'll say that. Okay. Um, and that's my NFL shit. I think I'm done. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, I'm glad that we're back on uh on our normal day Wednesday. I want to shout out to all the stories that I'm sure are going to break this week. The one week where we don't record late. Uh, Coachella happened over the weekend again, but nothing really. You know what I mean, <laughs> that shit wasn't televised. Yeah, it ain't nothing. Yeah, nothing really to report back to you guys on that one. Uh, it's been a slow week. It's been a slow week. It's been a slow week. Anything else you guys need to get out? Get out before we uh. By the time this podcast drops, I will be in Los Angeles. Uh, doing nothing. Nice. Uh, Rory, I don't know what Rory be doing. What are you doing? I'll be chilling. I'll be in New York. It looks like you have my sleeper up to play. Oh, sorry. I'm playing it first. Well, I was going to go first because I got to (laughs) go. So, so you got to go. I'm playing it. So you got to go. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, then go, nigga. (laughs) I've had this song on repeat too many times. I knew that me and Rory's music taste was a bit similar. Sometimes we come in here and want to play the same joint. Mm. So, well, you can play it. But you play it. I'm going to intro it because, man, let me tell you something. I don't like this Khaled kid. I, I've never been the biggest. Rory's a fan of his. I'm so not, I'm not. <laughs> you say that every time. Because I've heard you play a few of his records. That's I all. I played that first one that got really big, but his album was for kids. It was I listened to it. All right, but so I, I take it back. Yeah, I'm not. Rory was the person I heard playing his other record a lot. That made me think that Rory was I a I think he's going to be a good kid when he grows up and talks about things that I would like. So this record, though, it could be your sleeper, Roy, but let me play it because I intro better than you. Uh, well, that's not right. You can intro it and then I'll just hype you up. I'll be the hype man. <laughs> no, you got it, bro. Take, t- take it away. All right. So I purchased I purchased this song and I'm probably more excited about it than Rory because Rory has liked music from this guy before, but I never really could get into him. Uh, but Khaled, Khalid, I'm Khalid. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it on purpose. Khalid put a record out featuring Black, featuring Ty Dolla Sign that... I have been playing nonstop since it came out. It's called OTW, which stands for On The Way. And, well, before we play it, Rory, who do you think bodied this? Because I think they all got in their bag. I think Ty got in his bag. Black they, was in a black bag. They bodied it differently, too. Yeah. Each verse is very, nothing like the other. Very, very different. So, I'm, well, you didn't answer. Who do you think bodied it? <laughs> I'm always going with Black. Over Donald? They both bodied it, though. Yeah. I don't know. Black hits you at like your seventh list. And this is OTW Cali Black Ty Dollar Sign. Let's go. Put it in drive. I'll be up the I'll be on the way. I'll be on the way. Oh, yeah, for 
saw you this afternoon, I believe in your mind No fear, but you gotta let me know I'm all ears and I got a lot of room My way, if you wanna take it there I'm on my way Put it in the drive, I'll be on the side, I'll be on the way I'll be on the way, and you can be me in the five I'll be your man, I'll be on all day Bitches sport out here in the field, oh yeah I'm already here, yeah, yeah Come outside looking like a snack Hurry up, get in, hell yeah Come with me on this mission Riding down the cars I want up for sure You said break a lead I said pass the weed Pull up to the crib, boss Said you never been before Put you up a fuck a door Girl, I made you meet them all You said you left your ex That you was always cash You said before me you ain't Took an L with him and went in ever since You in my phone, I'm on my way, I can't play Push up on their own, I only got room for two Front of dicks on the set, it's a push, not a bit I confess, I'm a flex, today show some respect Get away so we can make sense of your life You wasn't pop, but I just put your shit in drive Now, close, like there's no tomorrow Moving too fast, I'm hoping to dry so I don't want you to wonder where I go Can learn a lot from this and it's something that I know Brand new music from Khalid featuring Black and Ty Dolla Sign. That one is called OTW On the Way. That was Rory Sleeper. Really my sleeper. <laughs> but that was Rory Sleeper. Rory had to get out of here because Rory had some fucking employment shit to do. So whatever. That was great. I'm going to play this record by, uh, by Jameson. J-M-S-N. Uh... And I'm familiar with him, but over the weekend, uh, Steph, 11.8, put me on to this record. Uh, no better feeling than getting put on to new good music. Um, and she knows that about me, so shout out to her. She's one of the people I trust. I trust her music senses. Uh, so she, she, she sent me this record called So Badly by Jameson. It's an old record, but I've been playing it along with that OTW record ever since. So let me get into this. Hold up. Hey, I mean, hey, now and then I bump into one of these old records with the weird, the weird vibe that I be fucking with. I'm definitely, I'm definitely walking around the house naked while this beat is rocking. <laughs> oh. It's my house. I had a pause. It's a bad bitch. <laughs>
Not brand new, that's an older record, but that's Jameson So Badly, J-M-S-N, So Badly. It's pronounced Jameson, or maybe I'm just making that up in my head, but beat was hard, record was hard. Shout out to Jameson, man. All right, Maul, what what hard hip-hop record you got for me now? I'm playing R&B, man. I couldn't find Yo, it your last few sleepers, right? Now, I meant to tell you this, but we was beefing, so I didn't tell you. Um, <laughs> your, last, your last few sleepers, man. I, I need you to text me the names of them. I need to purchase those records. Not the Acid Joint by Sebastian. I got that one. But the other ones, I want to buy those records. Yeah, those have been, bag when you get in your R&B bag, you all right, man. This, uh, this, I, I believe this this dude's name is Nobody, but it's N-B-D-Y. name of this uh, joint is called Used To. I see what he did there. Say mom. <laughs> See, this shit sound hard. All right. Yeah. This shit been on my mind for a while, man. I think I lost the real one. And I've been feeling so down when I lay down. The only time I'm looking up. Got in my madness if I end up hitting your cell at the dark. I've been drowning in that courage Liquid, my judgment been blurry Oh, oh, oh I'm a mess Get you back, it just made you stress Know you're better off with the next man, yeah But I can't see you to let go, let go So when I hit you with that text Hoping that you give me another chance I know you need some time Can't change the fact that fucked up your heart I'm down to make it all better Can we get back to love like we used to? The shipping on my mind for a while Man, I think I lost a real one hey. That boy Sean said it the best Beautiful girls give you their best Believe you depressed and all That's true. I ain't suicidal Feel like I'm stuck in a USL of mine No, I don't deserve you But until I get through to you I want you to know I'm a mess Get you back and just make you stress Know you're better off with the next me, yeah. But I can't seem to let go, let go So I'ma hit you with that text Hoping that you give me another chance I know you need some time Like, just like we used to, yeah 
like we Can we get back to loving like we used to? I think he's slick, man. You gonna stop doing that shit? I'm gonna get back in my rap bag in a minute. Who, who's that? Let me try to buy this now. <laughs> NBDY. I, be, I believe it's nobody. The re- name of the record is used to. Let's see, cause you be playing songs niggas can't buy. NBDY. Oh shit, there it is. What's the name of it? What's the name of the song? Used to. Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, I love when you can buy some new music. This is great. Double click to pay. Come on. Hey, oh, the 75 is clear. Recognize. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I will say he handled that shit well, man. Go, yeah, go, go, go handle that shit well. And shout out to all the people out there striving to get $75 together, man. Disposable right. income, man. It's just, it's just important. <laughs> 75 ain't chump. You get a lot with 75. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 75. But she chump. is bugging to think she was getting that money at the party. <laughs> <laughs> Not why the boot just got nah, it out. Nah, I got a floss. The chick I'm trying to fuck next is here. <laughs> Excuse me. And you're married. You, you were last month. Right. <laughs> yeah, if I was the husband, I'd be getting into her. Uh, I would yeah, be getting sure. into her, for real. Um, And that's it. Until the next story breaks. Until next time, fuckers and fuck it. Really enjoyed your company. Again, shout out to the YouTube subscribers. Hit the subscribe button wherever it is. Erickson won't put the arrow there like I thought he would. But it's there somewhere. So hit subscribe. Shout out to YouTube commenters. Shout out to everybody listening from work. I hope you have a good, productive, great week. 70 degrees in New York next week. 70 degrees in New York. Cooking out? Huh? Cooking out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to. If I'm here. So yeah, that's it. Talk to y'all later. Peace.